hello, hello, hello. It's another glorious day, my tea sippers, and you know what time it is. I hope you have all of your comforts together because it's time to dish the tea. And you're just darling. With big beach. Hello, 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 <laughs> oh, hello to all of my tea sippers, my crumpet dunkers, my tea brewers, my pot stirrers, and my tea leaf readers. What's your tea, my darlings? It's another glorious day, and I know you got all of your crumpets together because, darlings, it's time to dish tea, and you are dishing tea, darlings, <laughs> with Big Meats. What's up? What's up? Oh, my darlings, baby, this is going to be a real cute one, honey. I think this is going to be a real cute one. Wait a minute, what I do with the phone? I'm trying to make sure I got everything out of here with me, and I'm going to move the phone, but okay, I got to go get it, because I want to make sure everything is, is right here, right next to me. Um, But it's going to be a very, 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 very interesting show this evening for this wonderful Saturday night, honey. Okay. So it may get a little that way. I'm going to tell y'all now. Um, the disclaimer here is this conversation is for discussion purpose only. Okay. So that we can flush out some things. It may be a hard conversation. It may be a difficult conversation. It is one that we have had before. However, we're not, we're going to tackle it from a different angle. We're going to probably cover some things that uh, have been said and all of that. Um, but nonetheless, we are going to get down into this and hopefully become enlightened from everyone's perspective. Okay. Uh, earlier today, I was listening to one of our affiliates. I was listening to Stan Mason, uh, beyond the blue curtain and, um, going over there, there was some stuff that they were talking about when we got to talking about the double side sidedness of justice. Okay. And um, while we're over there, uh, here's something that I think that is absolutely a, a pin in my balloon. It is a thorn in my side, honey. It is nails across the chalkboard these days. And that there is, I am so sick and tired of hearing the phrase black on black crime. OK, now, for those of you who may say, well, uh, I don't know how you tired of it because, hell, we got a lot, we do have a lot of black or black crime. Look at Chicago. Everybody always want to go to Chicago. OK, but here's the thing. The reason why I get so tired of that moniker is because of, under that moniker, we have a lot of political shit. OK, black or black crime has now become a political banner. It has become uh, a notion to where when anybody wants to talk about legislation, when they want to talk about um, uh, any kind of policies, even when we talk about gun control and police brutality and this and other, it always diverts back to black on black crime. Okay. And somehow that becomes just the foundation or it becomes a building block on which folks want to take take whatever platform they're choosing. My problem is this. We have never, ever, ever had on any platform or anybody's political stage or anybody's anything when it comes to policy, we have never had any of its equivalent. 
We don't have white on white crime. We don't have Asian on Asian crime. We don't even have gay on gay crime. We only hear black on black crime. And then, oh, well, we got to do something because black folks killing each other and they sit up there and an alarm array, more black folks kill each other than the police. Do. We got all this bullshit, okay, that they want to keep spouting as fact. And I'm going to say it may be fact to a point. And what I mean by that is your statistics may say it on this particular level. You're not giving me a comprehensive look at what those statistics are supposed to represent because nobody, no one has ever pointed out on a national platform in the media or anywhere else. When we talk about uh, black on black crime, they, they talk about the high percentage. But nobody ever talks about the high percentage of white on white crime, which in some cases, depending on whose report you're looking at, white on white crime, their percentages are higher than black on black crime. Huh? Nobody looks at the point of, they always want to say, well, you know, it's the inner cities and it's those urban areas and things and this, that, and the other. We got a lot of people who are, you know, they in dis, they are impoverished and in disadvantaged situations. But honey, those who out there in those rural areas, honey, the trailer parks, as we like to say, those who out there in them, in what we call buttfuck Egypt, honey, they have no sense of, of civilization, honey. They, they got the hospital at 40 miles away. Okay, they have no sense of anything. Them same folks, honey, poor white people out there who end up on food stamps and 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 on Section Eight, like like a lot of folks that y'all say are off here in the urban areas. They kill each other and carry on. And the, and now one of the differences is that a lot of that shit don't get reported. Now does it? They can sit down there and hide a body in the in the in the, in the pig slop or whatever, and I know that's a generalization. I know that's a stereotype, but I'm I'm saying that to make a point, okay? Because we don't hear it, we do not hear it. It ain't never white on white crime, honey. When the child sat down there in Las Vegas, honey, and did all that killing at the at the country concert. The country western concert that wasn't white on white crime, uh, white on white crime. That there became domestic terrorism, which it was, but you didn't label it white on white crime, did you? But here in Chicago, the same children we got, you would label it gang fight, you would label it, you know, oh, it's in a city, it's that hip hop. It's that thug. You label it all that. And it still, and then in addition to all of that, it still becomes black on black crime. So if we're going to have this playing field or whatever, then that means we got to do this across the board and we need to come up in here and play this field right. You understand? This here is why this we're, we're going to have this conversation. And a part of this conversation is going to become, and I titled this show, Are You the Piece of Parsley on the Plate? Did y'all know when y'all go out to dinner and carrying on and they come and serve you your dinner? Okay, you got this pretty ass plate and the parsley is right there for decoration, you know, and to make the plate look pretty and to give it some color. Are you the piece of parsley on the plate? Hmm? Because we're getting ready to, and we, uh, we are about to, we are about to, embark on something that's going to be a hot conversation and i know it because in this conversation it's probably going to set up a lot of stereotypes and carrying on but at this particular point this conversation needs to be had because we're going to look at exactly what is white culture or what is being white period hmm? because a lot of folks want to believe and stan and i were talking about this earlier he's going to come in soon um, we were talking about this earlier because a lot of people, in fact, this was his, his thought. He said, a lot of people want to believe that being white only means blonde hair and blue eyes. Okay. And that's that. But it's more than that. Because white or the ideology of being white has become a culture. You understand? The ideology behind what it means to be white here in America has become a culture. So much so to where this particular kind of culture has been adopted in other different kinds of civilizations, which is why we get the, col the colonizers 
who have come over and started to usurp everybody else's territory. You understand? So now these are the kinds of conversations that we're going to have today. What is white culture? Because is white actually white? Because there are some black, black white people. Now, we could go and we could call them sellouts. We could call them, you know, the the we could call them Oreos. They're dark on the outside, but yet they're white on the inside because that's some of the shit that we say. You know, but what is it? What exactly do we mean? What is it? What does it mean to be white in this country? Is it and it's more than blonde hair, and blue eyes. And I'm a, and, and here's what I want to preference. Because it's more than that. Why? Because remember when blonde hair and blue eyes was was supposedly the standard of beauty, but all of our white women who were brunettes, honey, was having a hard time, or brunette couldn't get away. What about those who were gingers? See, remember, it wasn't called ginger back in the day, honey. They were redheads. But ginger now became the thing. And I want to re research department. Look that up for me because I, I want to say that the whole idea of redhead being ginger what had to do with Gilligan's Island because ginger was the bombshell beauty with the red hair. So now I want to know, did that become the standard because now everybody oh i'm a ginger no we used to call it redheads back in the day okay so that there is something that i want to get into today and it's it's we, it's, it's going to take a couple of minutes and we, we're going to break this down it's going to be heavily opinionated and carrying on and i'm telling you now if y'all get up in these comments after fucking crazy honey it's going to be on today because we could get crazy today okay we could get real crazy today because the thing of it is what we're not going to do. I want to make sure that we end up having a full round of discussion. Your opinion could be your opinion, but don't you fucking dare come out of a goddamn bag trying to be asinine and trying to be just fucking stupid with some of this nonsense because see, that's the problem. Whenever we sit up and have these kinds of discussions, people want to get real dumb and real fucking stupid. With some of the shit that come out your goddamn mouth, and then, or out your thought processes, let me put it that way. And then we end up having to dispel bullshit before we even tackle the problem. So we'll spend four hours on bullshit, and the problem never has been, never has been addressed, and everybody all up in their fucking feelings. You understand? So that's not what we're going to do here. What we're going to do is have uh, an honest conversation, okay? And we're going to separate conjecture from nonsense and fodder, okay? And what I mean by conjecture, meaning that you have a strong opinion that you may have a theory. You may try to theorize and say, I believe this way, and that's cool. That's conjecture. But when that conjecture becomes tabloid fodder and a whole bunch of bullshit, that's not what we're going to deal with today. No, we're not, okay? Don't worry, okay? Don't know, no, because that's not going to be the answer. You understand? That is not the answer. Okay. Mm. Let me go to the comments. Nick, you ready? <laughs> Wait, she here for, oh, she got her fucking popcorn. This guy. <laughs> she said, come on. All the shit. Uh, I'm here for all the shit. You understand? I feel better today. I'm here for it. And like he said, and that bullshit going on. It wasn't happening yesterday. It ain't happening today. It ain't happening tomorrow. Come on. Wow. Y'all okay. be this time as acting fool as you want to. Did you call me? No, I wasn't. That was Uncle Meach talking. And she said, did you call me? I said, no, that was Uncle Meach talking. <laughs> okay. Now let's go to the comments. Dear men, why all caps? Well, darling, I type in all caps when I put it when I put the shows up because I want to make sure it grabs everyone's attention. Yes, when they see all that, they're able to read it and carry it on. And then it adds to the flavor of the show. When I when I sit down and do lowercase, sometimes when I'm typing too fast, I hit the space bar, I hit the caps, and then I have to go back and keep having to 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 redo everything. So I just I just keep it all one size of the color. We loud over here in these parts. Yeah, that too. But you know, so Facebook. You think I, I mean, at you then. Text, it yeah, text loud. etiquette, and everybody say, oh, well, if you type it in all caps, honey, then you yelling. No, honey, I don't follow that damn rule. And everybody who knows me by now know that that's what they yeah. do. I don't follow that particular rule. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. If I learn how to do bold print on Facebook and carry on and bold print in all caps, then, yeah, this got something to say because I need you to pay attention. 
Okay. But because we can't bold print or whatever, I can't I can't even uh, italicize. Because usually if I want to put a slant on the word, I can italicize. You can it, actually you know? do it with your keyboard. You have to do it from your keyboard. Really? Yeah, you should be able to. It depends on your file. You've got to find where it is. And yeah, I got to find how. So so that's why, Darren, you know, it's, 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 it's not the yelling thing. A lot of folks think that I'm yelling and caring or, or want to believe that's what it is because we have a lot of these rules to be rules and, and text etiquette and all that old bullshit. So, yeah, but that's why. Okay. Hey, Tracy Collins, the birthday girl. You still celebrating, sis? What did you do, girl? What you do? Did you get did you get a couple of did you get a couple of swings in? How did you go to the we can't go to the hookah like we wanted to, honey. You know, it was her birthday yesterday, honey. She got the double oh, nickel, baby. Birthday, she, I'm trying, I'm trying to get there the double nickels. Happy okay. Buck is in the building. What up, dude? What up, from baby? Detroit. Hey. Okay, Theo Ross. Hey, what's up, hey, baby? Yo. What you don't know? Okay, you ain't on the date today. <laughs> Or are you getting ready? Okay. You're gonna probably be in here for yeah. a second. Oh, I got a date, honey. You better go do your thing, honey. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody mad because you're single, honey. Do the oh, thing, Mr. Man. Huh? Okay. The princess, I see you, honey. Okay. Okay. Yeah, there she is, Buckers. Okay. Shout hey, out to princess. my guy Stan. They said, yeah, Stan is coming up in here soon. Uh, most black blacks are killed by other blacks, but the, the statistics is also true of whites as well. The statistics point to both. Thank you. This is the thing. Can we can we can we get this in a little nutshell? People kill within their own communities. People kill the people who are around them. You kill the the shit is going on where you live. So yes, it's happening in the black communities. It's happening in the Hispanic communities. It's happening in different 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 European communities because right. those are the right. people who usually kill e each other. They're not usually going out. If you're going out to kill somebody from another race, then that's usually a hate crime. Boom. Say that. Say that. This fact is very true. I hate that many of these stats are used this way. Yes, honey. Yes. I get, I, uh, I, that, it, it just throws me, honey. It just throws me. Okay. Hey, guys. Okay. What's going on, baby? That's I Detroit right there. Right the majority of people on welfare Period. are white as well. Period. But they don't speak, or they don't speak on that either. Would you would you come on and tell that truth? Come on. Would you come on? And and they the reason why we're pointing this way. out. The reason why we have to why we're pointing this stuff out, because every every time it becomes this particular conversation, it always goes to over oh, the demographics. The demographics is that they're poor, they're just no, honey. That doesn't make a criminal all the time, or it's not concentrated to that area, because we're not the only ones that's that's there. See, we're not the only ones on the food stamps and then and then, and the this and then the that, and got, we're not the only ones. So if we're going to take this conversation, we have to make it fair across the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. They just don't, like you said, they just don't report it. Oh, it happens. It happens either just as much or maybe even more. How about that? They just don't report it. Y'all take a listen to this. Whenever they report in a crime, right? Mm -hmm. If they say a male, 36, six foot, blah, 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 they don't describe him. They don't tell you his ethnicity. He's white. Yeah. Period. And and, and, white. and that there has been, and now, do we blame the media? Or do we do we blame the media? Do we blame society? Do we blame all of the above? Because everybody needs to be taken accountable for that. Because see, again, when we talk about the duplicitous nature of what we're dealing with as far as trying to fight for our equity, okay? And it's not from a place of just emotion. You know what I'm saying? Because we can mm -hmm. all be pissed and things of right. that nature, but we got to come out of that emotion and start dealing with what we got to hit and where it is. Okay, the media will sit down there and do just that. But then, when have we ever challenged the media and be like, okay, That's listen, the part. we got a challenge. You know what I'm saying? Never because said anything. I'm waiting for, for Buck, you are, you in, you're in the news and you know what that was, particularly in print. So, it might be a little different in print than it is on television. So let me get your thoughts on that, honey, because see, that there is something that we need to that we need to discuss for real. Lewis, what you say, it was a domestic terrorism. They keep claiming mental illness when there ain't a damn thing wrong with them. You know Period. what? On that on that note, we have to we have to call it domestic terrorism because what it ends up doing is here on this land, 
and then it becomes a fight against the country. You know that there, um, uh, the Civil War was Civil War, and that was that was an act of, of violence and domestic terrorism against everything. So mm -hmm. it, yeah, that's the bigger that's the bigger thing, okay. But the thing that I, the point that I'm making with it is that it was never called white on white crime the way they right. like to say it. it was black on black crime. Right. Just like I said, it, it, you know, they, they would call us thugs. They would call us this. They would call us that. But then at the end of the day, that story still becomes black on black crime. You, you know, know what I'm saying? This one too, because you, you brought this up early when you said they talk about what's oh, the rap music? It's the rappers. Da, 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 da. And I'm not saying some of that stuff ain't true. But God damn it, have y'all ever listened to some fucking real deep ass heavy metal shit? Uh, go Kill your mom, tell your daddy, da 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 da. Why well, I don't ever hear them talking about that? And why is why it is that it you can listen to that and it's just entertainment? But when the rappers do it, it's tearing up, it's tearing down the society. And it's influencing the people. Right, because even though rappers talk about what happened in the street or whatever, whatever, whatever. I ain't never heard no rapper tell you to go kill your mother, hang your father, cut your sister up. But a damn sure done heard it in some of the motherfuckers. And, and, and I have heard that in heavy metal music too. Yeah, but <laughs> and I'm still it's not. And then it's not. It's still not considered white on white crime. Now we have seen movies to where you know they 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 do a movie on it, and it's the, it's the horror movie for the for the year. And and you know they want to tell you that they don't listen to the music and the girl done lost her mind and she done would have been there killed her parents and now she on the killing spree or he on the killing spree the Jason and you know they, they, we got movies but they but they chuck it off as freedom of expression it is artistic in integrity mm -hmm. it's just a movie it is never and now let me be fair because there have been you know instances where the folks were talking about the music but when they started talking about the music. It was never about heavy metal, right? As a whole, you know, they start talking about the music when white kids started listening to black hip hop and carrying That's on. That's all. When it started, when they started hearing it and yeah. understanding what was going on, then all of a sudden it was bad. Now we got to put labels on the records and carry on because heavy hunter been doing that shit forever, and I because we say, never I'm understood the word. Death, but she was one of the first ones. Yeah, she was. And Auntie Dion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Come on. You know, they were they were the ones because it be what they started to call misogynistic and carrying on. Mm -hmm. But heavy metal music have been doing that for a long time. You know, the only people that made us think about it was the church because they called it devil music. You know, but the church did but the church still didn't take it to the levels that it became where it became fodder or it became a political point of something everybody wanted to attack themselves to. Now, imagine you know what I'm saying? If some of those lyrics that we just talked about, because I don't like to say them that often, but imagine if the rappers start actually rapping like that. Right. Right. Y'all know how were... fast the music gonna get banned? <laughs> See, it's all right when they talking about destroying their own communities. Right. Right, right, like that, or right. When it was gangster black women and shit like that, you let them start mm -hmm. saying the same shit, but coming from our perspective, mm -hmm. say they was talking about it and talking about doing it to them, not right. to us, but to right. them. That should get shut down so goddamn fast. Right, right, because because they like like everything else. I said that we inciting the race war, we inciting this. And 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 that there is so if we're going to if we're going to make this plain, let's make this plain and have the conversation to be fair. It's not to say that I, I, I was having a disagreement with um uh one of the guys on on stand show. I I ended up calling in because I was typing in the comments mm -hmm. and you know he, he respectfully disagreed and we we respectfully agreed to disagree with one another. Because mm -hmm. as a police officer, he's looking at it like I couldn't tell him that because you know, you know, it is blacks this and blacks that, and we do do this and we do do that. We we are the ones that, that we do kill ourselves more than anybody else. And blah, blah 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 blah. I said, but that's not my point. My point is not that. My point is 
if you're going to sit down and say that we have a duplicitous law or duplicitous social justice to where they look at stuff from a different angle when it comes to black and white and carry on when we're dealing with race relations, black on black crime is now politicized. That is right. a talking point. Right. That's a talking point. That there, if you sit down there, listen, it became so much of a talking point. Y'all sit up there, y'all mad at, at Biden being president because of the poverty of people too to say he's responsible for the 1994 crime bill that puts too many blacks in jail. But y'all were saying black on black crime. Of, that y'all that y'all okay. only read this much of or heard this much of and don't know right. the whole damn situation. So when we have that, again, everything then when it comes down to these laws and when we come not to be duplicitous in 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 how we are seen, how we are how we are treated and stuff in this country, black on black crime is still a moniker and a banner for anybody who's trying to raise money. Who trying to to get political clout or whatever? Because as, as soon as you say that, that's gonna get folks all around. Folks like me gonna get upset because I'm, I'm tired of y'all using that. Folks Period. like like uh, the church are gonna say, "Oh, I'm so sick of these kids. They sitting up here. The parents ain't doing right. We got to sit up here. We got to stop all this black on black crime. We killing ourselves. We got to we got to do better. We got to come together. We, we get those folks. You get the white children like kill their ass and yeah, black on black crime. That's the come. I don't want them to be bombed. I don't want them in my neighborhoods. I don't want right. them here. I don't want them there. Yeah, you got the, the white supremacists. Well, fuck them because hell, they could do what they have, as long as they don't come out here. And Canada, but this is why we telling y'all the niggas ain't shit. Right. We get all that. Look at them. Okay, look right. Okay, we get all of that. Why? Because that moniker, black on black crime, is a political talking point. Now, regardless of how true it is, regardless of what it is, it is a talking point. And if we're gonna use that as a talking point then damn it, we need to take it across the board. We have to talk about white on white crime in this country. We got to talk about Asian on Asian crime in this country. Do we even have it here? We don't hear about a lot of Asians killing each other. Because they police they so. Because they put... How about that? Think about all the people that are here that are undocumented. They police they so. So Ooh. we wouldn't know. So we wouldn't know. And we because know that they, Asian gangs are some of the most notorious motherfuckers in the universe. How about that? How about that? How about that? Watch a documentary or two. And exactly. Find out. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that. Watch and see. Let me go to these comments because y'all blowing them up, honey. Y'all up in here. Y'all have been here. With all the information, we must consider the source. Who controls the release of information? Mis- and disinformation is fair to us for one reason only, to assist in our elimination. Well, all right, honey. Yes, the, uh, we must take into consideration that those who own the mainstream media platforms are primarily white as well. Okay, exactly. Thanks, Eric. Don't worry about the crazy. Come do you, brother. Oh, you, I ain't worried about crazy, honey. I'm just Again, I'm telling just, them before born. They too. need to worry about me. Not okay. Just, not just the uh the the you know the mainstream media, but think about it. Think about any time we've ever had a station that we thought was for us. What wound up happening? Yeah. Yeah, it gets you served. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It gets you served. Okay. Hey, I Nikki, love you. Good to see you, boo. Thank mm -hmm. you. It's good to be seen, honey. TC, happy birthday weekend. Yeah. Okay. You sat in the living room and party by yourself. Okay. I hear that. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday. She goes, she gets off she at two. <laughs> Look at the uh, yeah, Okay. Proud, so you wait now. Honey, I got a date. I don't know what y'all doing. I'm talking to y'all until she get off. Right. Dig that. I ain't mad, that? honey. <laughs> I ain't mad. But when police officers kill unarmed black men with some bullshit crime. When excessive force isn't even necessary, then it's not a hate crime when it should be classified as one, especially yep. when the cop have numerous complaints about the same thing and it's a trend. I yep. like that. I, I like that because you know what? Now that there, I stand, I need your ass up in here because see, that there is something that needs to be discussed as well. Can a cop be tried for a hate crime in uniform? Because I like that, especially when they well, when it seems like apparently right. they can't even be tried for a regular for it to just be a regular crime. 
especially when you have when it has been proven and your record anytime a cop got x amount of damn complaints against them for the same exact thing okay no it, it, it's not about it, it's a misunderstanding it's right it and a misunderstanding. I, I feel like I, okay my inner my inner walk uh-uh quick it ain't no misunderstanding it ain't no misunderstanding it ain't no <laughs> misunderstanding shit okay mm -mm. no it ain't definitely can speak to this we are told that sex sells, but I will also say that it is true of color as well. A story involving a person of color in a crime tends to get bucked to the front page quicker than oh, that time. of someone who is white. Ooh. Every time. Also, let us point out that this became necessary because most people purchasing rap music as well as all music in general were white as well exactly because remember for the music industry honey they wouldn't let blacks be on the cover of the music they would they were whitewashing and white facing everything to where so that whites could buy it you know and carry on hey road what's going on baby hey road okay I hate I missed that part of the show today. Definitely will catch the rest of the replay on YouTube, of course. <laughs> okay. Listen, somebody go over and put up in the, in, on the Facebook page for me the YouTube link. Because those of you who watch it on Facebook, you know, me and Facebook are in the battle right now, honey. Because <laughs> sometimes, they, sometimes they shut my shit down. Because yesterday they shut my shit down. What y'all talking about? Oh, well, every time I, I, I be had, sick and shit, shit be happening. What happened? We had, we had, who was Theo on yesterday? We, we did the listening party for his EP. Oh, and, how was it? And, oh, Sorry. the chat, yeah. Everything. Y'all was in here jamming? Said Everything. Said okay. Said and so said what they, they end up, on, they end up shutting the show down. Um, it's and, yeah, They shut the show down, honey. Tell me it was a copyright infringement in care. No. So I'm like, how when I got. This is right there. No, hush. So, yeah, so. Somebody put the link up for me, uh, the YouTube link in the Facebook comments. I don't have my phone. I got to go get my phone. Nikki, talk because that's bothering me. I usually have my phone right here behind the move, and I took it okay. somewhere. So here, talk I was to the chair. Something that uh, Meech was saying when we were talking about how you know they'd be like, "Oh, y'all see, y'all see how they are this that, and the other." But think about it the, during the riots and stuff when everybody was looting and stuff. But remember how black people was just getting mad and they was doing all kinds of stuff. And then we get to see that these white people in there planting motherfucking bricks and all kinds of stuff like that. But we ain't bringing no bricks because usually what was happening was it was a peaceful protest and then something happened and right. it turned into something else. So right. where did all the extra stuff come from to be burning stuff down, throwing bricks all through stuff like that? It's, it's so many things. There are so many different layers to how they portray us in media and how we are such the monsters. And all I ever think about, I come back to the same thing every time. You make it seem like that, well, they, I mean, the mainstream um, racist white people will make you believe that we as black people are dangerous and we're nothing but violent and this, that, and other. But your history shows that it was you. It wasn't really? us. That we welcomed you on our land and you sold us. And not only did you steal us from our shit, then you came to somebody else's shit and bullied them out of their shit, killed them all, and took their shit too. Then made us be slaves, work for you for free, sun up to sundown almost every day. Sometimes you want to let some of them have off on Sunday and give them that little piece of the Bible that you want them to know to make them be submissive to your shit. Then the minute that slaves are free, everybody lazy. Well. How, Sway? How? When, when slavery was yeah, over, y'all were playing, we had Jim Crow and all that old bullshit. We wasn't being, we wasn't the ones being violent to you. You were being violent to us. We walked down the street. What you do? We got to get off the motherfucking sidewalk so that your ass can pass. And if we don't, then you want to hit somebody, kill somebody, lynch somebody. So I'm trying to figure out how were you able to paint this narrative that black people were so violent and so savagey, savagery and all of this old shit when it's been nothing but you. And like the young lady, I always forget her name, but y'all know I love her to death. 
she said, if we learned it from you. If we violated, we learned it from you. Okay, that part. Come on, like that, that shit is so goddamn weird. Y'all know how we do it as black people, and it's a shame that we have to do this. You know how back in the day, and I don't watch the news as much because we read it all on social media, but remember how we used to watch the news and a crime come up and you sitting there like crossing your fingers like, please don't be black, please don't be black, please don't be black. Or you hear something real crazy and you already know, oh shit, they ain't black. Because of the craziness of it, you know, we ain't chopping each other up and all kinds of shit like that. When you heard some way out crazy, first thing go off in your mind is, oh, that's some crazy ass white man. Remember how shocked we was to find out that the DC sniper was black? Because we knew that ain't something that we normally do. But you know what? The DC sniper wasn't, he wasn't a serial killer for real in the aspect of the way that, that it is written. He killed all them people to make it look like when he was going to kill the wife, that it looked like it was random. So that ain't even in the same instance. But they will have you believe that we are so violent and we are so this and we are so that, but they never want to get where the root of it come from. Right. They want to say that they are like this and they are so distrusting and always willing and ready to fight, especially each other. Because right. this is what's been programmed into their head for yeah. what, almost two, cent two, three centuries now. Okay. You program this into us to not trust each other. You don't want the one in the house to trust the one in the field. The one in the field don't trust the one in the house because they feel like if the one in the, the one in the house won't sell them, what the fuck is going on? If y'all ready to go, y'all done stood up. You don't trust that one in the house because you feel like that one getting treated better. Remember we talked about that. But you forget mm -hmm. about, especially the women that was in the house, you forget about everything they had to go through to be being in that motherfucking house. They might have had on some nicer clothes. And was a little bit lighter because Master kept on raping their damn body. But y'all forgot that they was going through shit too. And that's a part of history we need to also teach. Right. Okay. That part. And so many factors into just the situation that we're talking about. And nobody ever wants to get to the root of it. You're black or black crime. Right? That's the narrative y'all created. But y'all don't say where the fuck it came from. Okay. Okay. Now let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Because here is where we are with all of this. Because I want to make sure that um, I'm in main topical. Hold on, let me go to the um, to the comments. No one talk about the white the rape statistics and incest statistics in the white white community. Yeah. Now let's talk about that. Okay. Well, okay. That there was that okay. That's okay. That's the YouTube. Okay, thank you. This is the link. Thank y'all. Stole us and then tried to reprogram us. Tell him, Nikki Boo. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Hold on, Nikki. Tag me in. <laughs> <laughs> look, Lewis. Ooh, look, did you catch it? Okay. <laughs> talk that oh, talk, Aunt Nikki. <laughs> Now here's where this is because me down for a little couple days when I be sick, but I come back strong, y'all. I come back and strong every time. Okay, exactly. Now, okay, wait a minute. Okay, well, then not to mention whites are the biggest killers and rapers in world history. You didn't rape just women and men. You stripped people of their culture and natural resources. You stole not not only our lands but our history as well. Name and point, Cleopatra. Ooh. Come on. <laughs> Now let's go here because see, Jesus, I said Jesus. I'm just telling you from y'all own word what y'all said he looked like. I'm just saying. I'm just I'm saying. sorry, I, I, I got stuck. <laughs> um <laughs> but here's what this is. Uh the whole idea, and like I said, are you the piece of parsley on the plate? Hmm. Are you the piece of parsley on the plate? Okay. So, yeah. Let's do this. Because here we have the ideas to understand exactly what being white means. What is white culture? 
okay, what does that absolutely mean? You know, for us, because we say it all the time, or we say the dominant society and carrying on, we say that often, you know, but what do we mean by that? You know, when we call a black person an Oreo, what do we mean by that? Okay. We were talking about that too, like, because I think it's a difference for black and white people. I think it's a difference when you grow up around a bunch of white people. Uh huh. I do not feel like you're acting white. You're acting the way that you grew up. Right. You're around okay. those people all the time. That's where you grew up. If you went to, I like to say that's why I love when my mother used to be like, "Why oh, you always want to be down North Philly at your grandma's house?" Because that's where all the black people are. You live up here with all these white people. They don't like us. They only want us to be. So, although I can be in either place, I would rather be what everybody would call the hood because I felt comfortable there. I was comfortable there. But the same token for a white person. We always had one or two white families in the hood. Right. The kids were not acting black. It was how they grew up. Right. It was their culture, too. Now, when we think about culture, it's not just your heritage. Your culture is what you're living every day, how you grew up, everything that you're taking in from how you grew up. So if you're the black family growing up, or say you was a black child adopted by a white family, you ain't acting white. You grew up in that goddamn house and you don't know nothing different. White kids, y'all ain't, I don't feel like every white kid who acts like what we call acting black is a wigger. I feel like we genuinely had a family of two in every hood that's white and they grew up with them and that's how they act. I don't feel like they okay. appropriate the culture. I feel like they don't know nothing else. When that's the way you grew up and you don't know nothing else, that's not the same thing as like Malibu's most wanted. When your ass ain't never been to the hood, ain't got no black friends, don't know nobody black or nothing like that. Maybe something, maybe a teacher at your school or something like that. And then all of a sudden you don't listen to some goddamn hip hop and you think you're black. That's different. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do this because see, I'm sitting up here looking up a couple of things. Okay. And uh, there's an article here in The Guardian that I think is absolutely interesting, uh, dated February 26, 2018. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to get into that one. I want to read this because this here is a definition and this comes from uh usmessageboard.com and somebody said what is the definition of white culture and it says white culture is a set of values of the european heritage peoples of the world it is marked by fairness honesty law abidingness respect for the individual cleanliness bravery and a, a virtuous spirit and above all nobility and honor white culture values a gentleman's world it values politeness they're interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> okay, now here's someone else. Now this comes from uh, because I'm it values politeness to who? Each other. Honey, listen, I'm just I'm I'm just saying what the, I'm just reading what the children say, honey. Okay. Now this here. Uh, I'm going to get a, I'm going to read a couple of these paragraphs. This is taken from, this is called Talking About Race. And this is from the National Museum of African American History and Culture from the Smithsonian. Okay. Okay. Yes, Chad. I could put, I need to put these links up so y'all can mm -hmm. read these on your own. You know, okay. So it says here, whiteness and white racialized identity refers to that way that white people, their customs, culture, and beliefs operate as the standard by which all other groups of are compared. Whiteness is also at the core of understanding race in America. Whiteness and the normalization of white racial identity throughout America's history have created a culture where non-white persons are seen as inferior or abnormal. 
This white dominant culture also operates as the social mechanism that grants advantages to white people since they can navigate society both by feeling normal and being viewed as normal. Oh, I like that. Persons who identify as white rarely have to think about their racial identity because they live within a culture where whiteness has been normalized. Mm, I like that one. Thinking about race is very different for non-white persons living in America. People of color must always consider their racial identity, whatever the situation, due to the systemic and interpersonal racism that still exists. Okay, wait a minute, hold on. I think I'm going to read this next little paragraph and be done with this. Whiteness and its accepted normality also exists as everyday microaggressions toward people of color. Acts of microaggressions include verbal, nonverbal, and environmental slight snubs or insults towards non-whites. Whether intentional or not, these attitudes communicate hostile, derogatory, or harmful messages. I think that there is fucking brilliant. I think that is brilliant. Okay, now let me pause right there because I'm going to play a clip. I'm going to play a clip that, um, <laughs> okay, go do your thing, Theo, my boy. <laughs> I told you he was only talking to us. Until he was only going to be here. Okay, this, okay, that's the reason for girl. I got to go. <laughs> I got to go. <laughs> okay, take care of you, baby. Okay, I'm so glad that he is happy, praise the Lord. Right. You know. Okay. Uh... Uh, wait a minute. Oh, hold on. What Lewis said, Jesus had hair like wool, skin of bronze, and eyes like fire. Jesus wasn't a pale-faced, blue-eyed man born on Bethlehem, honey. Sure was. Okay. They were simply a product of their environment. I agree. Okay. Almost like Malcolm X version. <laughs> okay. So here, let me play this clip because see, one of the things about, and, and I want y'all to understand what where, where we're trying to go with this. Um, the whole idea um uh, the the dominant culture or whatever is that it is more than just being blonde hair blue eyed mm -hmm. okay because a lot of us have subscribed to that at what being white is we we always subscribe to white privilege and oh this is white privilege and oh this is white privilege this is white privilege and is that what being white is? Is that what white culture is? And I think what what how the Smithsonian just uh, with the African American Museum, who are from the Smithsonian, mm -hmm. how they describe that, I think it's, it, that there is is a much inclusive definition because when we have black white people, that's exactly what. Wait a minute, let me go back to that definition because I like because the part that got me was this: whiteness and its accepted normality also exists as everyday microaggressions toward people of color. Microaggressions include verbal, nonverbal, and environmental slights, snubs, or insults toward non-whites. Whether intentional or not, these attitudes communicate hostile, derogatory, or harmful messages. And how many Black folks that we know end up doing just that to other Black folks? And, and, and you know, in, in the sense of having acquiesced to what we say is white culture, See, we, we, we would be quick to call them Oreos and sellouts and all this, that, and the other. But I, I, is it that or is it that they have just acquiesced to white culture? Let me play this clip from Roland Martin. Okay, this just happened a few days ago. Was it yesterday or the day before? This just happened. And this is just a small clip of this. Okay, it's a small clip. But catch this. You actually had to say something racist. As well, a, well, actually, to, first of all, if you uh, read the story when a white exec, when a white executive, David Friend, is quote is saying in the story, uh, first of all, uh, that uh, questioning uh, someone who's black. When you have Peter Dunn who says he doesn't like the face of the black anchor. Uh, when they say that the black anchor, Yuki Washington, uh, I don't like his jive talk. Why is he always dancing? When the black female anchor, Brooke Thomas, how was is that racist? How how is saying you jive talk racist? Are you serious? I mean, I mean, I'm, oh, what I'm talking oh, about is oh, racist. Wait, wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Are you saying when a white, hold up, Lee, are you saying when a white male executive says, I don't like his jive talk, 
What the hell is that? So that was never in common use? Jive talk was never something black people said to each other? What was that the ever hell said? are you talking about? You don't want to do it. I are mean, you, hold on, wait, wait, stop, stop. Are you being serious here. right now? Or, or, or are we being punked? No, I think, I think you pick and choose. So we didn't say anything about Joe Biden talking about the word thugs, but if Trump uses the word thugs, somehow it's racist. Hold on, stop, stop, stop. Don't we, come on my show. No, 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 Lee. Don't come on my show with bullshit. When Obama used the word thug, no, no, Lee, no. When Obama used the word thugs against Baltimore, he got his ass lit up. Don't even try that. You didn't no, say no, 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 about no, 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 Lee, Biden. Lee, Lee, you're not going to shift this to Biden, Obama, and Trump. We going to stay right here on CBS. I'm asking you, if a white boss says, I don't like his jive talk, you telling me that has no racial connotation? Do you know what jive talk means? Do you know what it means? Oh, my God. I mean, because we can say, oh, well, I don't like the fact that he's wearing a red shirt. Well, I guess somehow that makes the white person. Hold racist. up. I mean, so I, when the white I, male I boss says, so I don't like her face to the black, like the black anchor, what is he talking about? Well, let's put it in context. The Lee, Lee, is, Lee, Lee, you know what? Lee, hold on, no, Amisha, 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 Amisha. No, 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 no. And ask a question. No, 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 hell no. Like the no, no, what we not going to do is the crap that you doing right now because you're not going to be a black apologist for racism. I'm not apologizing. That's exactly what you're doing. Oh, my God. We can I, find racism in Iraq. I mean, he, a white, that's not racist. So what is it? Is it just, is it colorful? You know, Roland, I, you know, I think just as much as there are white people who can be racist, there are absolutely black people who can be we racist. We are talking and right now about what? Hold ruling. up. We are talking we're right now. Ruling. We are talking Listen. right now about two white executives who have been accused of making racist comments by two white executives. And again, I think this is the point, Roland. This is the point that racist comments had to be racist. If black people can say something to another person, or if it was in common use at a particular time, somehow today it's racist when it was not racist before. Boy, bye. And I think we can but boy, boy, anything. Boy, bye. Lee, 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 you could take that bullshit to somebody else's show. Lee, that's nonsense. Lee, it's utter, with Lee, it's utter nonsense. What you saying right now is... <laughs> Yo, I love Roland. <laughs> and I love him even more now he's not on TV one because he can let yeah, it. Yeah, because he could, yeah. He can let it rip. Did this motherfucker say, do you know what job talking is? I said. I know, I saw you, I, I, I saw you buck, because I buck. When, when I first saw that, I said, what did you just said, say? You see, you see the girl over the one that always be? She said, Oh my God. Right. Are you serious right now? And the fact that you're trying to make excuses. For every single thing, are you serious right now? Come on, dude. But now, now is he is. one of those people? Okay, if he Come grew on. up that way. Because if he grew up that way, he'll know no better. But but it, this this is where I, I I'm I'm gonna say no. He knows better because he's been indoctrinated with it. I you yeah. know. I don't care how much you've been to parochial schools and this, that, and the other. As a man of, a black man, I'm just going to say a man of color. No, as a black man in this country, I don't care how well your speech is or whatever. You're going to get hit with that race card somewhere along the lines. And I don't care how many schools you went to, honey. I went, I didn't get to go to public school to the ninth grade. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many all white schools you went to. You may have had the influence to be able to attend those schools, but if you try and pretend that ain't nobody in that bitch treats you different, you're a liar. Okay. So, I was there. I was uncomfortable. And that day. there is where we are. When I talk about white culture, and we're looking at the dominant society, okay, and I'm calling it the dominant society because right now, Everything about what we know here in America comes from their laws, their laws, their actions. I've never seen nothing that they let us bring. 
you know, and carrying on. And, 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 and it's, a, it's a constant fight in order for us to come in and to make some shit happen, in order for us to stand on our own, in order for us to, to, to have it to, to define something for ourselves without it becoming looked upon or whatever. I mean, here, let's look at this. We, we are still, there was a YouTube petition going around so that we could have Juneteenth as a national holiday. It's a state holiday in Texas. Yeah. Okay. Because and, um, of all places. Well, well, it was because Texas. it had to be because it's Texas. Okay, Texas was the was is where it started. Okay, because Texas but I got said, the memo. When you think of Texas, right? You don't th you don't think about them trying to be fair to black people at all. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. So because of that, this is where we are. Okay, there are several states that still don't even recognize Juneteenth at all. Okay. Other states, there are well, a couple Martin other took them states. To recognize Martin Luther King's birthday. Exactly. That's why I was asking last week, uh, a couple weeks ago, y'all, did did uh, Las Vegas or Nevada, whichever one it was, was it, no, Arizona, I'm sorry. Arizona, did they ever start observing it? Because they fought oh, yeah, the for a long yeah. time. When we were talking about a couple weeks ago, I asked somebody to um look and see, do they, because they were the only state that didn't observe it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, but that was years ago, and I never really thought about it anymore. Right. So that there is where we are. So when we talk about, um, um, when we talk about it, so it, so we're we're trying to make Juneteenth a national holiday. Okay. Right now, it's just a state holiday in Texas, and and and, and observed as a state holiday. There's a couple other states that may observe it as a holiday. But Texas, for sure, has it to where they do a big celebration and this, that, and the other. Um, but we're fighting for that still. This is 2021. Right. Okay. Th th that's where us learning these different things that we're learning in politics and stuff now comes in. Y'all want this as a holiday? Then we got to make it happen. How we make it happen? Start off with petitions. No, Take no. Making a bill. You know, um, we gotta go through hold steps. On. How do we make it happen? Start celebrating the damn thing. Let's start there. Right. Make it Let's a start there. Y'all vendors and stuff like that, those places that will make a holiday out of every motherfucking thing. Remember when we was in school, when we was on the campus, I'm gonna say, <laughs> and every day we came in there, it was yeah. a different motherfucking day. They had goddamn National Donut Day, Pancake Day, right. motherfucking this day, that day. Right. But remember, when we start asking that that year when I said, "Well, what we doing?" For what, Juneteenth, we, mm -hmm. I said, "What we?" No, I said, "No, it was Black History Month." I said, uh, "What we doing for Black, Black History, History Month?" Black History Month, yeah. I ain't gonna name her name because I think she dippy and don't know no better. But her <laughs> eyes got big as a motherfucking deer in headlights. Right. And she's not technically Caucasian. She's not. She's not black. But she's right. Caucasian. Right. And when I asked her, it was like. Because it never dawned on Our her. celebration, even on our campus, came from Black people who loved themselves and loved us enough to do things for us. It did not come from our school as a whole, the same motherfuckers who was having National Pie Day, Donut Day, Pancake Day. The motherfuckers were down there making us pancakes. Yeah. For Mardi Gras Day. Right. <laughs> Apple pie for whatever damn day that was. And donuts for whatever damn day that was. But when it came to Black History Month, the people who participated in our Black thing, shout out to Raheem and I miss him. Shout, shout out to Raheem. Shout out to Chardonnay. Right. The people who participated and made sure that we had something was not, it didn't come from the school doing it. Right. It came from people who work there doing it. You telling me you can celebrate a goddamn donut and a pancake, but you can't celebrate us as a whole when technically you're not on paper, you're not an HBCU, but motherfuckers, y'all are HBCU. Right. Anytime we laughed and joked when me and Josh was like, Josh was like, shit, I should get me a minority scholarship. I said, shit, you should, you should be able to get it. Okay. 
That was our resident white boy. Josh was our black white boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So here is where this is when we talk about culture and, and whiteness and carrying on. How is it? Um, let me go here. This brother is taking the conversation places it wasn't meant to go. Exactly. Always. Because if he just answered Roland's questions, Roland would never have to go off on him the way that he do. Because I've seen him on there before. And it's always some Uncle Ruckus bullshit. Okay. What you say? He put a little extra on it, though. But, but you know what? The whole thing of it is, that's why we saying that I love that he's on digital and he has his own platform. And he could say because whatever he, he wanted to say. He ain't stifling. Had he been on TV One or whatever, they'd have bleeped it. He'd, he'd have probably got bleep or he'd have to restructure his thinking. Right. Unless, unless it was and live. See, all his TV One stuff wasn't always live, right? No, it was recorded. So no, no. Video. He started going live. Okay. But there were moments where um, they would try to they were they they were on a delay because I know it was one episode he, he they it was something he was quoting and the word nigga was in it and every time he would quote they they would bleep it out oh okay you know so they were on a delay so that they could do the little TV one little swirl thing to bleep out the word and then mm -hmm. come back in because it was a live show but uh nonetheless the platform here no no see just like here call that motherfucker out on bullshit that's bullshit what you're trying to say yeah and trying because to make it seem like these things aren't true like come on he, no but what i don't he, like I, those I, people who try to make it seem like like racism or just it disappeared it disappeared no not just that not only that it disappeared but what they're trying to see his point is what we hear all the time from folks who want to get technical about the wording okay well, wasn't that a word that we use? What is, do you really know what jive talk is? How is it that now that that there is offensive now when we used to say that to each other all the time? Boy, jive talk, you ain't even old enough to know jive talk. I was getting ready to say, we was the little when you... they were calling it jive talk. What are you talking about? And then to catch it, the term being old itself, how in the hell did this white man say to talk about something y'all and y'all jive talk? Okay. Con that there was it, it was an epithet when we say it. Here we always would jive turkey. Jive you was a, turkey. okay. They all the exploitation films. Right. Okay. It was a put the, the jive was a put down anyway. Okay. It was a put down. Okay. You and your jive talk. That was a that was an insult on language. Right. It was like us the same way when we started calling it ebonics and stuff like that. Yes. When you hear a white person say Ebonics, talking about Ebonics, they are never saying it in a way that made you feel like, oh, this is your own lingo, like, good for you. No. If they say you speak in Ebonics, they call you ghetto. They call you uncouth. Remember when our moms used to say uncouth? You uncouth, uncouth. bastard. My mom was <laughs> fucking uncouth ass bastard. I'd be like, well, damn. But they never said it in a way that made us feel good about being able to speak to each other in a way that only we can. Exactly. Nobody has ever made us feel like that was okay. It was always exactly. Like, they speaking in bonnets. Let's go there, body bonnets. Research department, pull up for us uh, when that when that argument was taking place when they were trying to put ebonics as a curriculum. I think it was a California school system or wherever it was, and it was trying to take on a national. It took on a national fight. Pull that up. So that we can have that as a reference point here, because again, we're talking about white culture, and it's more than just blonde hair, blue eyes. Okay, it is an ideology. White culture in this country, and perhaps in other countries where they have colonized it, is an ideology. Yeah. Okay, it's an ideology that has been permeated because. When the settlers came here to take over this country, that's what it was. I'm better than you. This is how we do things. Remember, we were always, hell, the natives were called savages. How in the fuck they savages in their own land? Exactly. When did this, and this is what I always try to figure out. When did it switch 
that you could say just because the way you were living made you civilized. Because if I'm not mistaken, motherfucker, you didn't learn that on your own. It was people that look like us who taught you how to be civilized. Right. I'm just saying. Right. It's in your history books. See right. how to res how to respect the land. If you see, we you've always been wasteful because hell, the whole the whole thing that was taught. If you kill an animal, you use the whole animal. You use the entire animal. You don't just leave it for waste, because then that's in vain. Right. Okay, that yeah, was in vain. For whatever you need to use the properties for. Yeah. You used the skin for clothing. You had the meat. You know, the ladies were wearing the jewelry, the, the yep. teeth and stuff for jewelry, and this, that, and the other. You know, or they grind it up for, you know, for salves and carrying on the day. Mm -hmm. They used the whole animal as best they could. Right. The only thing that was that was buried, and then they gave it a proper burial. They gave it a, 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 to respect the animal respect because the animal. It, it was a sacrifice for because us. Because remember, it's the circle of life. Yes. Everything goes back around. Yes. So, See, and if you ain't never read a history book, you could watch The Lion King and, and know that. Mufasa told it to symbol. Sometimes, sometimes y'all got to watch that shit with y'all kids and stuff and understand the lessons be in there. Okay. So that being that, how is it that the ideology of white culture, how is it that it has permeated so to where now what we what we're living with now is the residue of it? We're living enthralled with it because it has been inoculated into everything. Mm -hmm. You know, even having to deal with it on a on an interpersonal relationship. Because see now, just like just, I love this damn line. I'm gonna read it one more time. Go ahead. Whiteness and its accepted normality also exists as everyday microaggressions toward people of color. Acts of microaggressions include verbal, nonverbal, and environmental slights, snubs, or insults toward non-whites. Whether intentional or not, these attitudes communicate hostile, derogatory, or harmful messages. That is just what's sticking out to me because everything that we know about the culture of whiteness in this country, that there seems to be the permeating or, or its, its foundation because white culture is not just white people. Right. Look at everybody who has acquiesced to it. Look at look at how Asians come over here and have adapted that kind of mentality. Asians come over here and follow us in the stores and you go now. You you come still, you go now. You, you know? But think about even with their own cultures, they change right. their names. They change yeah. their names to be what? Africans come here. And all of a sudden they got this. I'm learning, I'm trying to learn how to spell your name and how to pronounce your name. And then right. your name is Lisa. Huh? Okay. Karen. What? Uh-huh. When did it become that everybody had to conform to your shit when you've never originated nothing except for stealing and being violent? How about that? And those are the things that you don't want nobody to say about you. But those are the only things that actually belong to you. I know I say it every time. Dick Gregory said, the only thing they ever invented was the goddamn patent office. How about that? Okay. Keep saying it, because I believe it. How about that? I, I okay. About so many things when we talk about stuff like this. Like, remember when everybody, when we started talking about like global warming, but even younger, like when we were kids and they would just start to talk about it when we had Earth Day, shit like that. Uh huh. And they've made it seem like recycling is this big thing that they created. If you are black, you've been recycling all your motherfucking life. Well, if you open your refrigerator after Sunday dinner, Oops. And it's like 10 country crop bowls in that motherfucker and you got to open every last one till you find the actual margarine. 
Right. Y'all been recycled. <laughs> if there was a goddamn Maxwell House coffee can. Okay. Two, on your grandmother's stove. One for chicken grease, one for fish grease. Y'all been recycling forever. Right. Anything that we use that could be reusable, grandmama and mama found a way to reuse it. Uh, hello? I do it now. Look, anytime I find a jar, I be making arts and crafts and stuff all the time, right? Y'all see this? I made a little a snow globe. It helps Lily and Cole calm down when they have anxiety. So now every time I get a jar of salsa or something, Meech, this that little jar. Remember we was in that, um, the international market that day? And I got uh -huh. the piece that was in the jar. Yeah. That's what this jar is. So anytime y'all grew up and you repurposed stuff, you've been recycling all your damn life. Don't let them make you think they showed you how to recycle. Exactly. Okay. I just had to throw that in there, y'all. Okay. <laughs> This here, I put the link up here. It's on the Facebook page. Okay. If you're on YouTube, I put the link up in there, but it looked like it 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 is it, it, it was too long for uh too many characters on YouTube. Okay. So it, it, it doubled twice. So in the second one, you see that percent sign and blah 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 blah. That's the end of the link. Okay. Here I put it here on Facebook because this is the entire link to that uh the article that I keep re referencing for the um the National Museum of African American History at the at the Smithsonian. Okay. Yeah, that line of um, reading is amazing. Because okay. just oh the way God. that it's written, the way that it's written makes you think. Exactly. Because it's it's basically like the way that they act. Because it's like you have this polite shit that you do. You don't really like us. You might not scream it to the rooftops. But you do this little shit. Y'all remember Michelle Lay called it nasty. Okay. Okay. You know. Okay. And it, it, it's just fit it's just fitting. It's just fitting. Um, it's just fitting. Now it's crazy. Um I'm only gonna play a piece of this, just a little piece of this. Okay. Because I'm waiting on Stan to come up in here. Because I know Stan. Is, uh, I'm hoping he comes up. He said he was. No, not yet. Okay. E, did y'all uh, send hoping, out the best signal? Um, I'm hoping that he comes up in because he said he would. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. um, I I want to play a piece of this because how many of y'all saw the movie One Night in Harlem? I have, and I can't remember nothing. On Amazon Prime. That's the movie with uh, Malcolm X and Muhammad Ali and mm -hmm. Jim Brown and 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 Sam Cooke. And they, yeah. and, and they this this is uh, a movie. It's fiction, and it is about a conversation, an imagined conversation that was had between those four brothers. Mm -hmm. Okay, now. Jim Brown is is he was interviewed, okay. And um, wait a minute, I said one night in Harlem, didn't I? It's one night in Miami, okay. <laughs> I did say one night in Harlem. One night in Harlem. It's, no, it's, it's one night in Miami. Harlem. Thank you, thank you, Princess, because I I always say one night in Harlem, and it's one night in Miami. Um, they referenced this. Uh, Jim Brown. You know, he talks about it, but he said, yes, there was a conversation, but he never said what the conversation was. Mm. Okay. He said they did have, they did meet, and there was a conversation, but he never said what it was. Okay. Mm. Because they were brothers, you know, hanging. And so he went, that, that was a private conversation and carrying on. So this particular movie is an imagined conversation, okay? Mm -hmm. That takes place right after Ali had beat Sonny Liston. He was still Cassius Clay at the time. Okay. Sam Cooke was still doing his thing, you know? And, and this is before he wrote 
Uh, a change is gonna come. Change is gonna come. Yeah. Okay. So this is what all of this is. Okay. And it's an imagined conversation. Uh, but I'm going to play this little clip because one of the power to the people children, honey, Mr. Ty Tyreek Nashi, had a couple of words about it. Okay. Because he didn't care for it. Okay. Yeah. He didn't care for it. And I'm hey, Tyreek, I didn't care that he made all those um uh hidden colors movies and ain't had no black people on the goddamn staff. So you ain't had not one black camera operator, not one gaffer, not one black. Don't play with me, Tariq. This ain't what you want. Now you trying to make everybody be woke. But you're I'm looking away wife. from the camera, darling. Because <laughs> I was just stuck for just half a second because. Let the record show. Let the record reflect. Yes, God. Okay, come on in here, Red. <laughs> 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 wait, wait, you did not just raise the eyebrow too. You raised the eyebrow too. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Okay. Oh. Yes, he did. How are you, Nikki? Better. I was able to walk today, so I'm happy. Like y'all, I couldn't feel no better than that. All right. Okay. Well, Ray, you knew that Tariq ain't use no black people to make these colors films. Yeah. Uh, if you say that one more time, I'm gonna go out and slap a hunky. Don't do that. <laughs> okay. Don't blame them for some shit he did. That was his fault. That wasn't theirs. Well, how about that? I mean, that's just the truth. Because okay. I feel like when people do stuff like that, I uh -huh. find it real funny. The ones that were there doing the blood, sweat, and tears of their dog on education and their accolades slipped their mind. The people that are going through what they went through, knowing how hard it was the minute you stepped across that stage to even have gainful employment in the industry, you would Come think you, you would be able to reach back, not grab everybody, but be the person that represented and to grab somebody. Break the chain and start the doggone subject matter. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you but reach at back. At the end of the day, this whole series was about black people and us knowing ourselves. You don't think that sooner or later somebody was going to say, "Hey, I was there. I was one of the commentators or whatnot, but I, I wasn't rocking with it because every time you know I had to do my stuff, I ain't see no people of color doing because that made it seem like that none of us was here." Yep. Uh huh. We have a seventy-five thousand dollar debt to prove you otherwise, sir. Okay. Yeah. But and there but Woody, we have. But Woody talking about Meach. Come on, let's see what the hell. Woody, Come on with that Woody Allen bullshit. Okay. Let me do this because I, I, I it's, it's seventeen minutes. This particular piece is seventeen minutes long. But I don't want. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I was going to say, you know, if you play the whole thing or anything, YouTube will shut us down. What well, is this? Yeah. Harlem? No, no, no. Miami. Yeah, but this, this, this is this is his thoughts about it. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I, 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 well, I, I'm, I'm a player to know where to stop it. Okay. okay. Um, because after that, he goes into his whole conjecture and things. I just, I want to get his main point. Okay, I was trying to get it. It was up. The clip that I wanted to play was up on um, up on Instagram, but I couldn't get it to download like I wanted it to. Mm. Okay, so yeah, so we're just gonna have to just bear with me, y'all. And I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play this like this. Oh, I, I, okay. No, 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 no. Let me do this because then I have to go back in and do it. Let me know if y'all can. Do Family, people are talking about this movie. I'm bringing Did it I hear this. that? Mm -hmm. One Night Miami. It's about, uh, I, I think it's a fictional account of Malcolm X, Jim Brown, Sam Cooke, and Muhammad Ali all chopping it up one night in Miami. Okay. 
Now, let me say this about this film. I saw some people online kind of giving it props or whatever. I got through half of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. I got through half of it. I kind of fell asleep. It was late, but I got through half of it. And family, my problem with this film, a lot of problem, it was a lot of problematic things in this film. There were some things that was problematic in the film. Now, one thing I like, I give props to um, my dude who played Jim Brown. He was real good, good as, as Jim Brown. He was very good as Jim Brown. My man who did Muhammad Ali, who was playing Muhammad Ali, he was pretty good. The dude who was playing Sam Cooke was pretty cool, too. Yeah, it was a fictional thing, but I got some problems with it. Now, Regina King, the actress, Black actress, they had her directed, so she's the face of it. Okay, but I want y'all to understand this went through Amazon Studios. And with films like this, they get little memos on what to say, what not to say. Yeah, it was it was fictional. It's a Regina King film, technically, but let me tell you something. One of the things that I didn't like when they had the Malcolm X scene and all this. They had some scenes in there where they were dissing the Nation of Islam, dissing Elijah Muhammad, dissing Minister Farrakhan, and I didn't like that shit at all. I didn't like that at all. That was extremely unnecessary. They were saying little stuff. I'm like, what is this? I'm watching it, and they were taking jabs at Minister Farrakhan. Now, Minister Farrakhan didn't really get the Nation of Islam popping until, like, late 70s. So during this time... For them to be a, even bringing the minister up in a negative way, because uh, I look at things through the uh, filter of the timeline. So I'm like, this is supposed to take place in the early 60s. Why are they dissing Farrakhan? They kept mentioning Minister Lewis. Like, Y'all caught that? I'm like, okay, why are they doing that? Yeah, they're using Regina King as the scapegoat. That was very unnecessary. That wasn't necessary. Why were they dissing Minister Farrakhan? That didn't make no sense. They were sneak dissing Farrakhan in there. And they were taking jabs. I mean, it kind of went on and on and on about Elijah Muhammad and all these women. And yeah, Elijah Muhammad got all these girls here and got all these apartments. They kind of went on and on about that. Which was okay. Let me tell you something. Gangsters of Harlem. The show with Bumpy Johnson, with Forrest Whitaker playing Bumpy, Bumpy Johnson. They got another brother playing Malcolm X in that. One of the technical advisors on that movie, yeah, Amazon banned Farrakhan, by the way. You see, y'all need to put all this stuff together. Amazon banned Farrakhan. That's by Amazon Studio. See, don't think that this stuff just pops up for no reason, Okay. You don't think stuff like this just kind of pops up for no reason. But the Gangsters of Harlem on Epics with Forrest Whitaker, one of the technical advisors on that show is our brother, James Small, Professor James Small. Because James Small worked with, you know, he was up there in Harlem when all that stuff was going on, and he worked with um, Malcolm X's family. So Gangsters of Harlem, Godfather of Harlem, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I said Gangster of Harlem. It's Godfather of Harlem, my bad. Godfather of Harlem. That show is very good. Very good show. Tight actors on it. And Professor Smalls is one of the, the technical advisors. Because, see, they want to get some people who were around that time or around some of the players, around some of the players' family, to kind of get their advice on how things really got down. And Brother Smalls let me know. He said, look, when they were, you know, doing the Malcolm part, I let them know. Don't get too heavy with all that Elijah Muhammad, you know, being with all of these girls. Don't, don't get too heavy on that. Like, we ain't going to do that. Brother, Brother Smalls let them know. We're not going to be going there. We're not just going to, we, we're not going to beat, beat a, a dead horse over and over again. 
You know, we're going to really show Malcolm how Malcolm got down. But this whole thing about being real heavy handed with dissing the nation and dissing Elijah. No, y'all need to kind of pull back on that if you're thinking about doing that. So Brother Smalls let them know behind the scenes. So you can let these folks know what to do and what not to do and how not to. Come on now. You can let them know, hey, what you're doing right there, that's just not a good look. I'm going to stop it there. I'm going to stop it there. Okay. Let me bring y'all back in. So Tariq says you can let people know behind the scenes is not a good look. You heard that, right, Red? No, no. <laughs> so, behind, so behind the scenes, do we need to call him about that one, that one, that one, man. That one crayon that one. in his box on his staff? That, that, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> Coming from his own words, I'm just saying. Okay. Now, the reason why I want to bring this up, because um, you know, I've seen some comments, because when I saw that, um, he was live somewhere or whatever, when it first came out, this is somebody else uh, replaying it. But the whole idea that I'm having an issue with is that and for those of y'all who are in the nation, don't y'all come after me with no bullshit. Okay, with what I'm finna say. Because everyone is entitled to an opinion and artistic expression. Are they? And because this was a fictionalized account, okay, y'all want to, he wants to sit up there telling us something. They were dissing the minister. Okay, who is he not to be dissed? And the, uh, if y'all remember historically, he was one of them people who was trying to get Malcolm out of it. Who is he not to be dissed? If this was a fictionalized conversation between four people, okay, and this conversation happened, I mind, mind you, Jim Brown, Jim has said they had a conversation, but he ain't said what it was, right? Okay. But who's to say that this is something this is something that wasn't that wasn't discussed? We don't know what that was or what the burden was that Malcolm had on him carrying all of that load and that weight and carrying of, 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 of being the leader of a movement and then was trying to create his own. You see? Did you he was talking about the, the stuff they said oh uh, when they made all the stuff? About Elijah and all the permits and the women. Well, it was the truth. What are you talking about? That's a well. No, okay, stop right there, uh, Nikki. I'm glad. I'm glad that came out your mouth right there. Now, <clears throat> you being a woman of uh, the No Pork Foundation, right? <laughs> now, this this right. What's you okay? What's wrong? Not when I'm inhaling and drinking. Mm. Hey, well, you know what? I'm sorry. The, okay, you being the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I gave you too much credit, Meech. I thought your gag reflexes was on point. My bad. Now, look, what I was saying was... It wasn't the gag reflex that we had to worry about, honey. I had it all here in my cheeks. That's it. <laughs> I was trying to... Okay, okay. Let's stay on task. Let's stay on task. Let's okay, well, I'm going to need you to do some cheek kegels, okay? Um, look. Cheap okay, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, this phone doing them. Look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, who in the United States of damn America didn't know that Elijah was a dick slinging pimp? I mean, and I don't listen. I've known it all my damn life, so apparently. I knew it before I read Malcolm X's autobiography. You could not be possibly. My problem, my problem with that is you could not be possibly exploiting or bashing anyone when you're telling the truth. Elijah had the bitch. I'm sorry, ladies. I ain't going to call y'all that because y'all was the sisters. And it's right. documented. Now, see, that part is documented. Right, it's documented. So, if you, you ask Elijah, if you ask Elijah right back then, he, you, you, he would tell you, you see what it is is that we have to, to understand that in these situations there's power that they must understand in the holy Quran. It's more than a blue pill. 
I might see. He has to spread his seed. He ain't never been no damn seed. It would be the demise of the nation. Of the people. Mm -hmm. The people of the nation. And my seed must be the one to litter. Okay, so I know I have a bias against Tariq, right? But his little statements and stuff just lead me to believe. What is it that is, is Farrakhan letting you cover his story? Is Farrakhan letting you do some shit? Because you all in Farrakhan ass right now, and I'm just trying to figure out why. Now, I, you know what? I've always been for between for the because minister because I'm really feeling my heart that he has something to do with Malcolm's back. But I do still think that he had a lot of good things that helped the nation push forward to where it is today. So I can't fuck with him because I really think that you had that done to Malcolm. Not to think you was really responsible. But I do still think that you pushed a movement forward and let it go past what, you know, what they thought of when people thought of Elijah Muhammad tarnishing it with the, the young girls. Because I don't really right. feel like the people right. cared he had different women it was that they were young girls that's that's the part mm -hmm. the right. girl thing that i think most people felt he was the first r kelly burger with no bacon that's what i'm saying it was like right okay so that's did you say r kelly like, burger with no bacon i'm gonna beat your ass okay i feel like to read yeah. that something where he's either able to cover certain things in the nation or maybe some kind of deal to be able to tell Farrakhan's thing or whatever, because why all of a sudden you his biggest, um, you know, so his biggest ally, you his cheerleader. What you, what's, what's going on? Well, you know what's going on. He, my brother, you you understand that if you advocate for the nation, you will get bean pies and fruit cups for life. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what? Stop. <laughs> Here, here's where I am with Don't all of this. Don't you do that? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here, here's where I am with 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 with, with um, the particular statement. And it's not that he that that's his opinion of, of of what's going on. I again, this has become a politicized thing because now we don't went to. Where Amazon had banned Sarah Khan and this, that, and the other. But now you go sit up here and let a movie come in and then they diss in the movie. They diss the Farrah Khan in the movie, blah, 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 blah. I think that was a stretch, number one, of trying to connect the dots. But at the same time, there seems to be this whole movement to where. Everybody feels they have to quote unquote protect the minister anytime somebody says something adversarial again, you know, about it. Okay. Or maybe it may not be adversarial. Maybe it may be something that is just conjecture. You know, somebody can say, okay, like, like, y'all know, I, I've said this many a time that during the Million Man March, I know he had put that together, but there was no way I was going to that damn thing because that march did not include me. As a black gay man, that march did not include me. Okay. I never even thought about it because my brother's husband went. I said, I never even thought about that so long ago, like the very first one. I know my brother's went, Brian went, like, and now that you just said that, I never even thought about that. Ah, that was the first thing that came to me because see, at that particular time, the rhetoric that he had at that time was very anti-gay. Now, has don't it know changed? my it has changed, it's altered because okay. now it's, it's not so much as him being anti-gay. What he has been is being inclusive, but he has also been down for saying that, you know, we need male and female to marry so that we can make sure that the, that, that we propagate and keep our line together. But he right. has not been, you know, before his talk was was a, a stone bashing of gay. Right. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whatever. I hate my computer. What? Okay, I love y'all. I'm finna I'm finna um I'm finna change in, into my Batman suit. I'm going I'm gonna go. Wonder Woman, I see you as Legion. Uh, 
Yeah, I need to I need to elevate my craft. I'm gonna move up to the stand. Elevate. <laughs> Go into the Justice League, the Hall of Justice, chat. I see you there. Hey, what's that you eating, Nikki? Salad. Ooh, she tossing that salad. You see that shit all over that place? I'm not with you. Me neither. <laughs> Three the hard way. Toss that salad. See, look, you got me a fist bump. No, good. <laughs> Come on, Meech. What? You the salad? Do it for the one you don't time. Eat. Do it for, do it salad for the one time. All right, that's do it. That's it. it. Do, do it for fair kind of No, no, damn, I'm not going to study it. Oh, that you got one is. for fist bump? Hey, one for cupcake. My sister. Okay. <laughs> I see y'all in one minute. Give me a minute. All right. Okay. <laughs> the party ain't a party until he rolls through it. <laughs> okay. So like I'm saying, I think that, that you know, I read in, in a lot of the comments, and like I said, there, there is a campaign to where a lot of people feel as though we have to do, you know, we have to quote unquote protect the minister. And my thing is this: number one, as long as he's been in this business and have been, you know, uh, uh, the forefront or the face behind the nation of Islam, this little shit here, honey, means nothing to him. Okay, I this is say nothing. Honey, and as long as the fruit are alive. As long as the fruit, yeah. Fair ain't I'm, worried about so, some more so, bullshit on the motherfucking TV. So you know, and 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 I'm referencing that because a lot of us, you know, well, why that was un. That, now the thing of it is, is that it was unnecessary. Okay, I want to use his words. He said it was unnecessary. So and like he said, yeah, he's and then he says, well, well, the minister didn't come in to get things stopped popping until mid 80s you know but where you're wrong is is the minister was back then one of the people trying to get malcolm out of here so Tariq, who loves to do your history on us black people how about you do it right he may so, have not gotten um, the nation popping again until right then, but he, but he was, was a still very right. part of what was going on back then right so this here this is why i'm having uh, a, a difficult time with accepting his commentary as something to, to latch on to instead of just saying I didn't like the movie blah 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 yeah. now we're in we're on this thing of oh here they go here's Hollywood they got this black woman who is the, who happens to be the face of it because she's the director you got these four black men up in here he really didn't care for the guy playing Malcolm okay he really didn't care for him but you know who I thought I thought he did a fantastic job, but I read comments and stuff, and they're like, "Well, they made Malcolm look weak," and this and another. I'm like, "Child, y'all looking at Malcolm from a different standpoint, honey. He having a conversation that wasn't all about being out there to show his face as the strong leader." He and remember, if you remember Malcolm's story, after he was Malcolm, after he wasn't Malcolm Little anymore, right? Only time you seen him be. So what you thought was aggressive was interviews. Right. And means it to get the point across. But when they showed him just as being a man or being a husband, Malcolm wasn't, he wasn't all rah rah. What you what you want? Mm -hmm. That's not what it was because he was never like people always get that by any means necessary shit twisted. Right, right. They're they always taking it to mean that Malcolm said we're gonna tear down everything. Right. That's what he said. What he was saying was, whichever way we can get it done, get it done. Get it done. So right. whatever means you have available, use it by any means, not right. by only this mean. He right. He said that. I wish I'll right. stop it. Right. Especially towards the end. Remember, he left. He came back with a whole different concept, a, a different way of thinking. Right. 
And then he said he fell asleep halfway through watching the movie. Exactly, which is why. Come on, princess. That's tell it. That I'm taking. Because if you look at this, there were some damn good things that came out of this movie, particularly with Sam Cooke's character, you know, and some things that he has set up in there as far as Black economic empowerment and things of that nature. Because basically, the movie sets around a conversation that was almost like an intervention for Sam Cooke. Mm. Okay, because he was into white women and, and carried, you know what I'm saying? And and this, that, and the other. And they were trying to get him, brother, you know, you're, you're using your platform wrong. Right. You know. But that's another thing, too. That's something that what we're going to put a, make sure we put a pin in that. Like, I don't like that if somebody happens to care for someone or love someone who is not black. Does that automatically make them? They can't and fight for black, the cause, right? Right. They're not. You down can't for fight for the cause because you fell in somebody fell in love with somebody white. I don't. I don't believe that. Case in point, we got stand on here fighting every goddamn day. Right. You know, and this this is why again going back to to the original thing. Are you just a piece of parsley on the plate? Mm. Are you just there to be cute and to add color? Okay, and I'm asking that because because this let's look at it from a, from the, the 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 black white boy perspective or the black white girl perspective. Okay. Okay, because all the time, as long as they can sit down there and 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 talk cool and care and all, and, you know, they're down with our culture. We don't never see them as trying to be black unless right. they get real ghetto side or whatever, and they start mm -hmm. wearing. If they still start doing their hair, do the, the bamboo thing. earrings and right, right. that's when it becomes most of the time to be black. But anytime she could sit down there and you know, and she could be, she could be, you know, girlfriends. Yeah, because she could you just know, be a Judy, like you know, good Judy's a carried on or whatever. She as she down with the culture, she know what this mean and that mean, this that and other. Long as it's that, we cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, are you partially on the plate because are you being anti-white? White culture because you have embraced this particular culture. Let's take what what's 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 Miss Singh's name? The transracial girl, Rachel Dosier. She the one I sent pictures of her to Nate to Nature Boy when he was doing thing, <laughs> ranting and ready to talk about. Do it for the culture. Yes. Lee, I swear to God. I was so happy when they when I started hearing that last. Because if I heard one more motherfucker say do it for the culture, I swear to God, I was going to jail. Um <laughs> I sent pictures of her to Nature Boy because he was on one of his rants one day talking about. White women don't go around wearing braids and locks and, and 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 child. I said every every hairstyle he said, I sent him a picture with Rachel Dozo in it. Uh huh. Come on, they don't do it every day. This bitch lived like this for most of her life. What are you talking about? Right, right. All of her adult life, yeah. And, and, and go over there down to the Kardashian streets. Everybody black over there. Okay. Even Chris, so now, you see her man been black for the last. Ever since Bruce left. Okay. That black man, they hold hands on. So so now when we when we look at what what does it mean because white culture is known, it, it never was blonde hair, blue eyes. That was just the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. You know. So now what does it mean? It goes back to two. When we think about blonde hair, blue eyes, who who really pushed that narrative? Yeah, that that's 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 Napoleon. That's uh, Napoleon and Hitler. Right? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. You know, Hitler pushed that damn narrative, even though Hitler his dumb ass ain't had blue hair blue eyes. And he didn't have it right. He had brown hair and brown yeah. black right. hair on eyes. Yeah, but and so along the line, he felt inferior in himself. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How you gonna create a nation of motherfuckers and you ain't even that? So even if you marry that blonde hair one, blonde hair blue eyed woman, ain't no damn guarantee your baby gonna come out that way. Mm. Number one. I'm just saying. Okay. <laughs> so so that's what we're dealing with here. Um, let me take a commercial break because I need to stand up for a minute and readjust <laughs> the seat because the seat done slid down on me. Let me take a commercial break. Yeah, I got I, I, my ass ain't hurting so much anymore. I got the new little pillow. So mm -hmm. y'all not been having cool. Help me up and down. Lord. So today I didn't need her to help me up or down. I was able to walk on my own. Won't do it. 
Okay. Like this motherfucker. Y'all see me looking at Nikki. La, 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 la. I took Cole <laughs> and Lily for nails and feet today. I was like, I can walk. Let's go. Hi. Okay. She said, well, thanks again for that. Cole got her hands and feet done today, y'all. Okay, how about that? The Monday pretty purple. <laughs> we'll be right back, y'all. In these pages, I am indeed Cicely, the actress, who has been blessed to grace the stage and screen for six decades. I am an observer of human nature and the dreamer of audacious dreams. And here in my ninth decade, I am a woman who at long last has something meaningful to say. across this country. Attention all business owners. Use your advertising dollars here. Looking to reach a more diverse audience for your products and your services? Well, this is the platform for you. Dishing Tea Entertainment welcomes all businesses who wish to expand their brands and looking for clientele that's more than grown and sexy, but also the seasoned and sophisticated. For more information on how this spot can be yours, contact Big Meat at 404-914-5610 or go to our website at www.dishingtea.com. 
Have you tried Big Rob Popcorn? It's a wonderful anytime snack that everyone will love. Available in three flavors. Grown and sexy, which is the perfect mix of cheddar, cheese, and caramel. Sugar Shack, a fruitful flavored mix of watermelon and apple. So delicious and good, good. How about spicy butter and white cheddar? Everyone loves it. That's why it's called good, good. All Big Rob snacks are manufactured in a FDA approved facility and flash seal for freshness, safety, and worldwide delivery. To order, call or text 937-367-8650. That's 937-367-8650. Or contact Big Rob via Instagram at Hey Big Rob. As the holidays approach, take advantage of the holiday special. Purchase more than two bags and receive a free CD. Call or text 937-367-8650. We are back. Please excuse my technical difficulties, honey. I done set up here. This damn computer done got real sensitive, so I'm trying to move and end up interrupting the commercials and shit. I'm like, what? Ciao. Okay. Now, any other time, honey. <laughs> when I'm trying to start the damn thing, the thing don't want to click. <laughs> so, anywho, wait a minute. The princess asked a question. I posted this question earlier. I mean, uh, I hadn't seen the Hidden Color series, but I heard of it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but did you say that the Hidden Color series did not have an all-black filming crew? Yeah, we said they that. absolutely did not. <laughs> Look, yes. and if you want to know, all you got to do That's what we're saying, is honey. Wait, till find, wait till you fall out with somebody and they tell all the tea. When him and, 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 and Umar fell out, Umar told it all, baby. Umar Johnson fell out, honey. Him and Umar fell out. Umar, Umar told all that to him. Okay. And this. <laughs> now I'm not gonna hold you though, Leah. The the black the hidden colors things has so much good information, and I'm glad I got to see them all before I found that out. Mm hmm. Because they are something that children need to see. Something we as adults, if it's a lot of things that we don't always know. There's a lot of things in there about us as people that is so much good information and we needed to hear it my beef with him is that how you want to tell a story all about us and give us all this history about us and then not use us to help tell it okay. you use the black scholars but you didn't use the black people to help tell it behind the scenes because we know now that the people behind the scenes make everything happen I'm, let, let, let's go here. As much as you just sit up here to talk about Amazon, what they are, and you, they, the Regina King is only the face of this movie, and they did this to shut down and just try to make the minister look at all that you just said about this movie. You still on that when your own shit about black folks did not have a black crew. Right. To sit down there now for whatever reasons, maybe maybe the timing was off. Maybe you didn't solicit in time. You know, maybe some of the people that you wanted to work with were not available. You know, I'm going to give I'm going to give that leeway because we don't know all of that. But at the same time, you did you did four installments. There's a five. Like four of them. I think it might be five. Four. four. It's at least but four. is it the fifth one? I gotta check and see. I forget if it's the yeah, fifth one or not. I know it's at least four. We had the DVDs. Okay. And so in, in, in understanding that, honey, listen, not one time did you sit down there and change that or whatever, or did you get contracted in with that crew? That's what it sound like. You know, and, and that crew for all of the series. 
You know what I'm saying? Maybe this was a production company that you did a contract with. Okay. And so because of that, did the production, did the production company say, hey, we'll let you tell this story. Right. We, we want to be on board. As, you know, yeah. If, if they if they liked the project and wanted to be on board and got an exclusive contract, then okay. Right. But still, you if, if that was the case, you didn't shop it, you didn't shop to make to, you know, or whatever the case may be. So, you know, we have a lot of questions and it's a lot of speculation, but you open yourself up to that being who you are to the community. The same way Umar did when you talk about this damn school and trying to raise this money and then you got all this money and now everybody like, where the school at? And all we keep hearing is talk. Well, I got this and I just came up. And, and, and. Now, I did say, hear him talk one time and I did, I guess because I had, you know, sometimes something just be on. And you don't realize that you done soaked it all up mm -hmm. until you weigh in it. And I don't know about any other time. I can only speak for this time when he was speaking about every time. It wasn't about not having the money. It wasn't about that. It was like when they found out it was him and mm -hmm. what he was trying to do with the school, he kept getting all these roadblocks. And the way he was breaking it down, I believed him. I, I don't you know what? all the bullshit that he said. I really don't, because I've heard him say some way out shit before. Some right. shit that's just like, like, dude, come on. Like, what century are we in? But the, the way he broke it down and what he was trying to say, like, especially over in Delaware and all, especially, uh -huh. and we were trying to say, I know the areas that he's talking about, and I can absolutely see that happening. Mm. I don't know if it's true, but just the way he broke that one particular thing down about people were saying he spent the money and blah, blah, blah. He was like, I didn't spend anything. Every time I got close to closing on being able to get it, and then we got to do, you know, you got to put in all this shit for what you want to use it for, and blah, 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 all these different things. They will always find a way to shut me down. Mm -hmm. With that, I, 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 I never, well, I did question it, but I, I, didn't, I didn't care about whether or not he spent the money. You know, I just wanted. To, but I know it was know, people were saying that because he was he was addressing yeah. that because he was, yeah. he was saying I spent like, it, 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 If it's as transparent as that is, then shit, show your books. Mm. Okay, because this is a public company now. You got donations, so if folks are coming for your credentials, like just show your books. Right. You know that's what big companies do every that's year. They do a damn in order to be able to get the money and, and get the guys, you got to be able to show it. Down every fucking thing. That would have shut everybody down and it would have given him his credibility. Again, I go on the whole thing of let not your good be ill spoken of. Mm. Okay? Now, that uh, you also got to pick and choose your battles because we know fuckers going to talk. Right. Okay? Right. But at the same time, something this big that sat down there and, and, and became incredulous against your character and carried on, Honey, no, we, you should have sit down there and said, you know what, here's what this is. You could have called him, hell, you got your own platform. You could have right. called, did this on Good Morning America. Right. And everybody, everybody questioning you. Throw a press conference and be like, hey, here's my accountant. Let's open up the books together. You know? And let me give you the report. Let's sit up there and show right. you what's going on. You know? But I, all of that, you know, when we talk about this, is again, are you the piece of parsley on the paper on, on the plate? Because we got all of this power to the people, we got this, 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 and this. And so when folks get to leaning on your words, we have to be very responsible. This is why here I know we say these are our opinions and carrying on because this is a commentation kind of show. Right. Okay. But we like to make sure that we back everything up with fact. When we give you the information. You know, it is up to you. I don't tell you to take me at my word. Go. That's why it's important. We put links up. So where this is where this information comes from. Came from. I right. never want to be one. See, because I, I I I question everybody else. Right. Okay. You gotta about come with the receipts, sourcing. honey. Let me what, what's your sourcing on that? Because you have to uh, you have to understand the source, which is why when we talk about white culture, is this a you know the the culture of it all. Because when we talk about it, and we talk about a dominant society, a lot of times their sourcing gets fucked. Okay? You can't tell me nothing about black folks and then your sourcing is KKK. Right. Or white supremacist or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can't give me that. Okay? You cannot... You, you 
have to be able to understand who you're sourcing at. Why do we? Why do you think everything on this internet, honey? You have to scrutinize it so much, right? Okay, because we we'll, we we'll, we'll get something that come across our our, our desk or whatever. Like, oh my God! And it'll be clickbait. But then when you look at the source, it'd be the the the, the onion or or some other satire kind of right. shit. Or one of these far left or far right damn papers, right. you know, that are sit down there and say something and be like, okay, wait a minute, let's break this down. Let's unpack an adjective here. Okay. Because, oh no, this here is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> okay. You know, and so we have to unpack it in order for us to get to the truth of the matter so that it's not all conjecture and fodder. You know? And so this is why now conversations like this are needed so that we can sit down and flush out some shit. This definition about whiteness and things from this Smithsonian, that's why I had to put it up in there so y'all can see that on your own. And there's more to, I just read to y'all the excerpt. There's a whole thing on this. That excerpt has just sent me in. It's the first time I've seen it. Okay, and it just sent me over the rainbow, honey, because it's giving me that that one piece that I keep quoting is giving me everything because it fits what what we see to be the dominant culture, and for those who fit into that element, whether they are Caucasian, whether they are uh, Afrocentric, whether they are Asian Americans, European American, whatever it is, that particular definition seem to fit all those who have acquiesced to that particular culture mindset. Okay. So so now where do we go from here? Yeah, like that that part. Where do we go from here? How do we then when we when we spot this or whatever, how do we then move beyond that? Because see, we have to get to a point where we can somewhat galvanize somewhere and so so that we can have a majority rules kind of thing. If we are a democratic society, honey, there's got to be a way that whatever the system, quote unquote, the system is, that we can sit down here, we can we could get amendments and things to the system. We can sit down there, break this shit down. We can sit down, there, we can change culture. Right. How about that? Look at how what music does. I mean, every time music changes and we get a new wave of music, what it does, it changes the culture. Right. Every time fashion designers do something that becomes innovative, it what it changes the culture. It right. is no longer a fashion statement. It is a cultural piece. So if we're able to change the culture, why have we not set there and changed white culture to where it's beneficial to everybody and it's not this bullshit that we keep calling systematic? Cause they don't listen to us. Mm. How about that? How about that? Okay. They How about more. that? Okay. So yeah. So all right. <laughs> We're losing our audience. But I knew I knew this probably was gonna be one of them to where the folks were gonna come in and come out of this one. But they might be listen because when we went on commercial, I put the movie back on because I was like, "Well, wait, did I see this? I don't think I saw it." What the night in Miami? No, really. Oh, Just honey, it on, I, I don't remember it. Okay, well then, yeah, well then, that's gonna be your homework assignment. Because I'm gonna rewatch. I'm gonna rewatch it because yeah. I, I'm t- listen. There is a line in there that that just sends me over the moon, honey. Over the moon, and it's a Sam Cook line. And it's when he sits down there and tell Malcolm as he said, You know what? He said, Motherfuckers claim that they want no. He said, he said, No, he said, Motherfuckers, yet. he said, People always say that they want a piece of the pie. He said, Fuck that. I want the whole recipe. The whole motherfucker. Hey, remember, I said we talked about that before. Just the shit that we say in our everyday lives. You can have your hey. eat too. Well, why the fuck not? Why would well, I want to eat cake if I can't eat it? You, that line gave me life, and it still does. Fuck that. I don't want a piece of the pie. I want the recipe, bitch. That way I can make my own and sell that, bitch. I, make, give me the pie. Give me the recipe, hey, motherfucker. The fuck? I'm supposed to just sit it on the table and look at it. <laughs> that sure smell good. Okay, I don't want just a piece of the pie. How come? And, and then, you know, because everybody was like, no, I, I want my piece of the pie. No, uh-uh, give me the pie. Right. Then, and, then, and then he said, no, fuck, give me the pie. Give me the recipe. I'll give make it. Myself. And I can make my own motherfucking pie. I'll make it myself. Now, catch that. Catch what that That's is. Jesus, honey. Don't See, give him no fish. Teach him to fish. Teach him how to fish. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. What you say? What you say? Oh, I know you are, Leah. <laughs> I know you here. No, I'm looking at the audience because I'm looking at my numbers up in here. Mm-hmm. And what we had a myriad of folks out. We're down to three people now. <laughs> yeah, but but it's it's a conversation. Well, then you know what? If it, if it's winning now, I say who all. Well, we only got three people. I was gonna say who haven't seen it because I, I don't. I just turned it on during our commercial break, and I and y'all know I watch any and every goddamn thing. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I don't remember this. As soon as even if I haven't seen something in a long time, as soon as I cut it on, if I've seen it. It yeah, in memory. So, uh huh. So I don't recall looking at this, and I'm going to go watch it. Okay, I'm telling. It's I gotta a, it's, watch it's, a documentary it's, tonight. I'm watching this. I'm telling you, one of the things about this particular movie that I think is fascinating. Number one, you're a director. Look at that from a from a director standpoint, because Regina needs that Oscar for this, because she directs the fuck out of this movie. Look at her choices and stuff that she makes in this motherfucker. Yeah. I'm telling you, ooh, ooh. Okay. But I'm also going to give that to uh, Malcolm and the guy, uh, what's his name? Ben, oh, I can't think of his name. It, it, he, okay, him and the guy playing Sam Cook. They need Oscar content nominations too. Now the other two, their performances are strong. But for me, they're typical performances, okay? And I'm like, they and 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 that's not taking nothing from the brothers because they are fucking good. Because the one playing Jim Brown, honey, if I swear he, it's almost as if I'm looking at Jim, just a, a thinner version of her. Yeah. Okay. Because I just saw the opening when everybody that came in, I lead them, you know, to fight, and then we uh-huh. had that first scene with Sam about to sing. Uh huh. Like I paused it right before he opened his mouth to sing. Okay. So we got that, and then. The guy playing Muhammad Ali, honey, he, <laughs> he is a, a child. He cashes, honey. He, he gives it a child. This is just a well, well-rounded movie. Now, for this to be um, um, a, 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 a what-if kind of thing, honey, you know, a what-if they had this conversation kind of thing, it gives us an opportunity to be like, damn, I can see that happening. Okay? It gives us an opportunity to see these characters in, in another light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and, that, yeah. as, and to see them as human and not just as the deities that we know them to be. You know, because all four of them, honey, they, they, they're there for a reason. They were powerhouses in our community. Right. Powerhouses. Okay, and they had, the, they had the heartbeat of the people right there. Right, 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 right. You understand? Right. So to have this and to show their brotherhood and as an imagined power, that there, I think that's just a brilliant power. I think people. it was so brilliant. And man, I'd be so sick of people worrying about the wrong shit. And that's what I'm thinking. To, see, again, now is that white culture? Because the dominant culture has set up there and the, the part of that definition, okay, to where it's hostile or derogatory or, or, or all, it, it becomes all of that. When we start to look at it from that from that particular lens, right? It's one thing to disagree with, and and I'm not trying to, you know, and I, and I, and it's a thin line between your personal feelings and then your conjecture that you add on your personal feelings, right? You know what I'm saying? Because it's one thing to say, "Oh, I just didn't like that, honey." Said, oh no, it just didn't agree with me. Yeah, just, I just didn't like the way they did it. And then I didn't like just your it. opinion. But when you start right. breaking it down like that, like yeah, when you start to the, break it down, be real. Right. It's not supposed right. to be. It's one of those what ifs. And you probably had some real shit to it, but you can't really say it. Right. Right. So you gotta say it's fictional. Right. Mm-hmm. Because whoever dropped the jewels on what really happened, we can't never know what really Okay. What you know about that song, girl? <laughs> Come on, that's one of my favorite songs. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I'll watch it tomorrow. Okay. So I'm telling you. One day. One day. Don't do it, Leah. That's Baby. Like this. Okay. That's my black white girl right there, honey. That's it. Exactly. Okay. Damn exactly. Good. 
<laughs> and see, and 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 I think she, she's she's the perfect the, the the queen of she was the ivory queen of soul, honey. Right, the ivory queen of soul because that girl they a child. Um, I tell um, y'all. I kept by. I done bought the same burgundy satin sheets over so many times over the year. The, the burgundy satin sheet set and comforter set that she had on that motherfucker. Oh, that eyes eyes and fire. Fire. <laughs> Baby, don't do it. Y'all see this hair? Y'all see this hair? Okay. It's like this color. Don't don't do it. So when, when, okay, that's a cute transition because I want to have a little fun. Uh, I'm doing okay, this because of because of it's after eleven. It's eleven fourteen, so I think you don't have to go soon. So let's have some fun. Okay. Let's, let's light it up. Because I wanna, I wanna go. You know, uh, Buck does this in in our uh, uh, group text here. Now they always do the album of the day. You know, mm -hmm. this is my album of the day. This is my album today and carry it on. And I said, oh. That day would be so fun. So I think I want to start incorporating that as we c come to a close and this Ooh. time. Because album of the day. So we're not picking song. We just pick an album of the day. Pick an album, honey. What if you, if you, what album or did, did you play or would you have played today that would have been your mood or set your mood or would have told your mood or would have been your mantra for the day? What was that album or what would it be? I got one. And it's so funny because I was listening to Pandora's today. And it's not even an old one. It's old, but not old school like us. Mm -hmm. The Makings of Me, Monica. Oh. oh. Okay. The album, she has some good tracks in there. Okay, but well, what you say? Makings of Me. Because there's some songs in there where it's, a, it's like, Today, y'all, I have to tell y'all that it was one of those days where I just felt completely grateful. Mm -hmm. Grateful, like so grateful. Like I woke up, when I woke up and I got up and I didn't have to call Cole. Right. To help. It was just this thing that came over me. I said, come on, y'all. Mom okay. and daughter, granddaughter day. Come on, we're going to. Now, I'm be mad. I'm tell y'all, I was mad as hell most of the day in the nail because there's only two people working in there. And they had to do me, okay. Cole, and Lily. And we was in there for about probably like four hours. But uh -huh. it was like, I was so grateful to be able to get up. And we talk about that, like just the simple things. Like you got to think about just the simple things. I think I put a post up yesterday that said, this morning I got up. I, I was able to get up, walk on my own, go to my car to myself, by myself, drive my car to go to the store. Now, I couldn't go that fast, and it hurt like hell, but just like in life, it ain't going to always be fast and easy, but I'm always be grateful. Okay. Because we think about it. We always want it fast and easy. That ain't how life mm -hmm. works. And my day yesterday and going in today, it wasn't fast and it wasn't easy, but I was grateful. I keep putting up every day on my new post. Us waking up is a luxury. We okay. woke up today. Not everybody did. Make the best of it. If yesterday was right. fucked up, and when you opened your eyes today, that was another chance to make the day better. And as I was listening to the makers of me, I was like, yo, this is dope. So I'm glad you I'm glad you brought that one up because I absolutely had it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. What you got? Mine. Was mamas, honey? One of mamas. Come on, <laughs> there's so many mine... to from. What did you choose? Okay, winner in you. Oh, yeah, winner in you. That that has been in my spirit all day today, and this not just for the title track, um, but there's there's a, one of my favorite songs off of that album is "Old People," uh, and when we when we're looking at um when we're looking at the world today because the, the the song said oh people um we're all writing the song mm. okay we're all living this world together forever there's no reason ooh we should live and be one <laughs> Okay, build the world that we want together forever. 
Okay. She said, we'll live on, honey. Oh, okay. She said, if we live in the world of possibilities Come of on. the eye of a child can see, if we lived in a world of dignity, okay, there would be no more hate between you and me. Come on. You understand? Oh. Mm. She said, think of all the opportunities that the eyes of a child can see. Think of all the possibilities that walk right by you and me. Woo! Every day. Think about Woo! what just walk right past you. You understand? Think about destinies. Think about destinies. Yes. I was talking, yes. I, I said something to Helena. We was talking last week. And I said, ain't it funny how you could be so close to somebody before you even knew them? Mm -hmm. And I always think about the time I was back in Philly when, when you know, when Molly had to do his little year and a half or whatever day. Yeah. But I needed a break from being up there. And I came and I stayed for seven days right across the street from you. <laughs> okay. I stayed in that Hilton for seven fucking days. And y'all don't even get what I'm saying to y'all. When I tell you, when you walk out of Meech's complex, it's across the street. Right. I stayed there for seven days. I was sick then too. I, and I was mad because, and I wasn't sick like this kind of sick. I was uh -huh. sick because I did a complete detox. And you know, like the first few days of that bitch, you getting all the toxins out. So your body uh -huh. was recharging. So I couldn't really eat or nothing like that. And I was in there for seven days. Y'all don't understand. I didn't know who the hell Meech was back then. I was across the street from his ass. And then a year later, Boom. we in the same building at school. And now look at us. Okay. The best of the, the best students. Of come the on, I have them today. Okay. Ha, come on now. I have that same album, honey. <laughs> okay. Real, honey. But yeah, Winner and You was my, was, was, and Old People is one of my favorite tracks. Well, it's Mama, but that put off that album, I'm able to, 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 to remove my bias, you know, because I love everything she sings anyway, but yeah. I'm able to, to, to get into certain songs. Old People off of that particular album is like my favorite track off that album. And I wish it had done much better uh, commercially than what it did because of the words of that song. And then a fun song that beat my heart like a drum, honey. Ooh. Okay. Um, and, and carrying on. Then, of course, the title track, There's a Winner in You. Okay. Yeah, and that there's on my mantra track. You know, I, 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 to LA. <laughs> to, the, the, uh, to the LA Rams, they're trading them. Um, so, having said that, that there was my album for the day. Then, of course, there's Kiss Away the Pain. Kiss Away the Pain is on that album. Okay. Mm -hmm. Please come back and kiss away the pain. And y'all know I've been dealing with the loss of my cousin and yeah. carrying on. And but the baby came because the baby was born. My I lost my cousin that Monday. The baby was Ain't born that, crazy that Friday. How, how that works, you know. So being on this damn emotional roller coaster because I'm like, shit, she gone, and I'm going through, you know, like a movie montage of of her and us, oh, you know, yeah. doing shit. And you know, and now the baby here. So I'm looking at my nephew. Is now a father for the first time, you know, and I'm like, my baby's baby got a baby, right. you know, and 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 it, oh, it's the right. proudest, it's the proudest, yes, and, 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 and like... all of that. So I'm like, so it is, it's, it's just all of that. So kiss away the pain, you know. It's like, hey, you know, um, just just to kiss away the hurt or whatever, because that that that's a, a relationship song, but you know, a loving relationship song, but. You know, just 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 understanding. You know, the baby came, and you know, to take away the pain of that, and this, that, and the other, uh, all of that. So it's just been one of those. So today, that that just hit me. And then yesterday, I, yesterday I was telling the folks, I did not have a real good day yesterday as far as my body was concerned. Oh, I'm you know, sorry. I, I was aching and can I didn't. I don't know where it came from. I'm not claiming off at all, honey. But I was trying to open up a bottle. And I couldn't twist the cap because well, you know, my I can't do that. Here, I can't do it now. Period. Like I can't. I was like, "Oh no, honey, we ain't we ain't calling." No, Arthur. Well, I'm gonna tell you what your niece went and got for me. A CBD cookie. It was three of them. Now this one, 
did have a little bit of TSC because I said, well, she had him on the phone trying to explain something to me. I said, listen, I don't smoke. I don't want none of that shit with the TSCs. He was like, no, this is like 0.3. It's uh -huh. very little. He said, but I do got the one that's like something. I said, no, I'm not doing that. I can't do that. But listen, I think that's what helped. I ate them shits the other night and all uh, uh, yesterday I kept eating like half at a time. Uh -huh. I think that's what helped. Oh, but honey, but they say what that's what it is. Now, now, listen, I was talking about looking at it from my mama because she got that sciatic nerve, uh, nerve damage on her back. And I was gonna ask her if she wanted to sit up there and look into doing that or whatever. And see, she, she's and home. Just the CBD, just tell her she don't even need like the medical marijuana, just the CBD stuff. I, I mean, it helps me. Well, here's the thing, child. If we if we got so many folks that got mar uh, medical marijuana cards around that they could go to the dispensary because Michigan. Right. Child, just like liquor stores, they got dispensaries. And child, two or three dispensaries in a goddamn block. I'm like, this don't make no motherfucking sense. However, since they open it up, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but but yeah. not everybody needs the actual marijuana. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I know for me, I don't think I need that. But will I do the CBD stuff? Yes, I will. They got. Do you know I got CBD Epsom salt? Mm-hmm. They put yeah. CBD in everything, child. Yeah. Because 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 now that's the go-to medicine or, or the right. thing. Right now. So yeah, now, now the government can make money off of it. As long as yeah. the government can make money off of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, y'all now that it, red, are you coming all the way in here? Because I didn't want to leave me by myself, but I gotta get Lily is still wide the hell awake. But she been good. Y'all ain't heard her not one time, have y'all? No. Uh. Uh. Because she been running back and forth, sneaking, doing shit she ain't no business. I told her don't get them big. You know how Amazon don't give you the little poppers. They put the yeah. things in the big giant thing. Yeah. She want, I know she want to pop them thing. I was like, Lily, if you put some shits back in the box. She was like, no, I'm not going to pop it. Mm -hmm. Girl. And that's what I kept seeing her run back and forth doing. She was getting one at a time because she detached them. Okay. Said, um, what do you do? She was like, I know you said not to pop it. No, I wasn't going to pop them, Grandma, but I was Go in there, everyone. You know, snuck in here, ran in, bring them back. Because what you not, will not do while I'm sitting trying to be quiet is by mistake pop one of the motherfuckers. Right. Temptation tapping on the back of my neck. Look, there oh, she go right there. What you, got see there? Mind. what you was doing there? Leave Lily alone. Everybody say that. Listen, natural. Ain't no leave Lily alone. Lily low ass, it is 12, it's almost 12 o'clock. She lucky. Okay. Uh, you know what, Meech, when you do come over to Beagle, that's natural. Over there, her name, you can have it. Um, over there, her name is natural, and she is a beautiful spirit. She okay. Beautiful. She be having praise and worship in the morning and stuff. Me and her had a real good thing the other day. I went on her panel and stuff, and we talked about different spirits. Oh, I was, because I was reading from your book. Oh, okay. And she was there with me, and um, she had read off a couple um, affirmations and stuff that she uses and stuff, and we just talked about the spiritual stuff and whatnot. She's like, mm. I love her. She actually, she's one of the people who helped me get my agency. She's in the same agency that I got. Okay. All right. I'm going to keep the keep the keep the same. Red, what are you doing? Well, I'm about to leave out. Go ahead. I, 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 girl, I got it. I got it. I got it. I because... love y'all. And, um... Tomorrow is Sunday, so I'm gonna try to be here. I might not be here though. I'll probably be here from nine to at the at the latest eleven. I might not be here for the whole show, but I'll be here. I love y'all and thank y'all for Hello. prayers. Hello. Hello. I'm having technical difficulties tonight. That's why I'm y'all was wondering what it was, and I got tired of holding my phone. Uh, I, think, I think I think what found out was the uh, I think a virus has attacked my Mac. It will not allow Chrome to operate on my phone. On your Mac, I thought Macs couldn't get. Oh viruses. wow! Okay, well, well, can you go into um what um uh, uh, Explorer? No, there's no. They won't let me do no Explorer, no Safari. Firefox is not doing nothing. It has totally blocked me from the internet ways. Once I try to get to them, it'll lock up and freeze. Oh wow! Oh wow! Damn, that's crazy. And it's it's crazy. I guess the motherfucker heard me that I was gonna replace his bitch ass because he old as fuck. So I guess it's time to get rid of this motherfucker. <laughs> oh, well, my goodness, today. Okay. Well, 
I got a voice, so okay, that there is cute. <laughs> so let's do this because I, I, I want to send the children home real cutely. Yes, darling. She said, oh, wow, he wrote the book. Yes. She said she was reading from my book. Yeah, I've written two. So, um, oh, I got to get her the first one because she got uh, the second one. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we're going to make sure that... Um, uh, you guys understand all that. So, and and I'll send you my my um my um email and stuff so that if you want to get a copy of it, you're more than welcome to that. But thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay. So, uh, oh, okay, darling. So, uh, uh, let me see. Wait a minute. Um, yeah, go to my website. That's what I'm doing. Putting the website up here and calling it. Well, wait a minute. We got to type it right. It's a dot. Uh huh. No, no. There we go. There we go. Okay. Bruce, you, said you can go there to my website and you can get your copies there. Uh. So yeah. So so now. Uh. Having said all that, I knew this this conversation was going to be. It, it, it's a difficult conversation to have, but oftentimes, you know, everybody likes to skirt around it and carry it on because. We really have got to learn how to have it, actually. A lot of folks don't know how to have these kinds of conversations, don't want to have these kind of conversations. And better yet, a lot of people act as if, if I don't deal with it, it'll go away. Mm. You know? That's and, more our people. Yeah, and, and we see what, how far that's gotten us. But what has happened is, the more we don't deal with it, we, we, we deal with it internally. So we start turning on ourselves. This is this is why the quote black on black crime is starting to become an issue because we turn on ourselves. I believe. You know, that 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 there's something that I come to, to just consider as an as one of the reasons why we have such a, a epidemic with saying that. Uh, but but I have to take that across the board because as I said earlier throughout all of this, I'm tired of saying black on black crime. And they don't have a white on white crime uh, 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 equivalent or whatever. We don't give that same moniker because it doesn't make money, point blank. Okay, it doesn't make money. And until we're able to look at this and call it what it is, and we get the, the national people to call it white on white crime, okay, I, I'm gonna give that to Roland Martin. I'm like, you need to call it what they call it white on white crime. The way they they talk about black on black crime, call it white on white crime. Call it that and see how and see how quickly that everybody want to sit down and dismiss it. Because if we could dis if we could dismiss that, then we could dismiss every we could dismiss the idea of black on black crime and call it what it is. We call that domestic terrorism, inner city domestic terrorism or whatever, what however you want to do it. But take that if we remove that damn moniker of black on black crime, then we could remove all that politicizing that is being done because it only works, honey, because folks want to want to do something with it. Or against it, or rile the people up, you know, on on one side of the of the of the issue or the other. It doesn't make any other. It doesn't do anything else because it doesn't work. We don't hear gay on gay crime, uh, do we? We will hear hate crime, but we don't hear gay on gay. That's gay on gay crime. Look at that shit. Them damn sissy. No, as a matter of fact, they sit up there and laugh at it. They wouldn't only believe that no. is. Gay on gay is like two two scoops of sugar. Damn, it was just a question. I mean, if it's two <laughs> scoops of sugar, if two sweets create one fucking one activity, that's like icing on the cake, right? <laughs> no, that's that's sweet enough for the tea, honey. <laughs> ah, uh. One lump or two. <laughs> I heard if you, I heard if you continue to get motherfucking two lumps, goddamn it, your chin will hurt. Well, <laughs> <clears throat> that's because you're not bobbing and weaving right. <laughs> that's the story of everybody's life. If you got the right rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> So be that as it may, honey. So, you know, 
that there is that. So we're gonna we're gonna cut. Wait a minute before we go. You heard about doing the album of the day. What if you were to play? If you had played an album, in it, if, or or were to pick an album that you would play in its entirety for today, that was that will say what mood you were in or dictate your mantra for the day. What would your album be or have been? David Hollister, Chicago '85. Ooh, ooh. Not Chicago '85. Come on now. That's the name of the album. I know, but shit, I'm sitting up there thinking about that, child. Hell, we were teenagers. <laughs> okay. Teenagers. Ooh. Okay. Hey, David, David Hollister, Chicago 85, lets you into a plethora of um, different life situations that actually go on in our neighborhoods and things like that. Uh -huh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Let me in. Let I me in. <laughs> I've said that before. <laughs> me and you both. I told you three. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, stop. Let me in this motherfucker. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. <laughs> Hey, right. can't nothing help you get in the door better than glad. Um, oh, no, I, no, I got wet, honey. Wet, black mouth. <laughs> yeah, I had that first. Okay. <laughs> mm. Mm. So, I, yes. I, I just rebooted the entire system of the Mac and, to get here. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm. And there you have it. So now, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mine was Winter and You, uh, Mama's, um, Patty LaBelle, her uh, Winter and You album. Okay, that's a dope album, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It actually, was one of my In My Feelings albums when it came out. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? But David Hollister tells you if you listen to, if you look at the David Hollister uh, Chicago 85 album, Mm -hmm. It takes you into a, a a tirade of of what they call domestic issues that are common in every mm -hmm. person's life. One of those issues with that entire album, you have at least dealt with it or something exactly like it. Okay. And okay. No matter if you're heterosexual, homosexual, or whatever, you have dealt with one of those issues on there. And the way that he put it together was so therapeutic because it showed that a man can not only admit when he was wrong, he showed masculinity in pleading his case. Mm. Instead of thinking, oh, you some little bitch begging her telling you was wrong. Right, right, right. right. But right. None of, yeah. yeah, but none of that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? He he snitched on himself like like one of the one of the main songs on there. He said the lyrics in the song. He said, "I was wrong. I cheated on you late one night when you was gone, right? Mm -hmm. I let my little head think. You know what I'm saying? And when he just he broke it down." I know that song, yeah. Then he said, I know I was wrong. You know what right. I'm saying? I told her to get my number because you're my baby girl. She's the one that I love. You know what I'm saying? I made love to you and got you sprung, but you're not the one, bitch. I need to get my ass on where I need to be. Right, 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 right. right. And he pin stroked that shit. Ain't no man, you, you, let me tell you something. If you tell a brother that's your friend and you know he's fucking up and got a bitch nose wide open and, and, and acting like they're in love, knowing you got a man. Oh, you know what? Let's let's have that conversation before we leave. When he do that, well, hold on, when he do that, the friend that tells you, nigga, you need to goddamn tell Shawty that you let Shawty leave Shawty the fuck alone. You need to tell her what it is. Mm-hmm. Tell your heart is at home. Like, you know, bitch, this is 
This is a game of Monopoly, you know what I'm saying? We both lost. You know what I'm saying? Let's get right. you know, I, and now that's the friend you don't listen to. Oh, nigga, you a punk. Hello, right. Let's go there. Let's go there for a spell. Because I knew you were going to hit something that's going to trigger me. Why is it that we have a problem as men going to another man and, and really not going to all that damn machismo shit be like, dude, you fucking this shit up? Because there is no reason that any of us should be celebrating any dude that got 16, 17 damn kids, 24, 32 kids. Man, ain't shit cute about that. And you got all these different baby mamas around here. And yet we as brothers or men folk was, have not put him, we ain't even told them, we ain't even got on O'Connor's and said, nigga, at least wrap it up. We ain't even did that. Nope. All we do was sit down there and, and because he's still able to shoot off, you know, sparks and he ain't shooting blanks it becomes a motherfucking game or we have allowed ourselves to let our sons because most of these are our sons and our peers and our sons mm -hmm. think that this is what the whole game of pimping and macking is all about hell no i have we as a as a body of men and particularly black men, because it's done across it's done across the spectrum. But I'm going to talk to us as men folk because we're the ones that's in the spotlight. We're the ones that have to that that that's sitting up there on Iyanla, and she got all these brothers sitting up in here, and all of them have had had over ten kids with umpteen baby mamas. Mm -hmm. okay? All of them. So how is it that we are not taking responsibility? At, we keep saying, I'm my brother's keeper. Am I my brother's keeper? We say that shit, but do we mean it? How come that's not part of part of our conversation? It's all my power to the people to that keep talking about that we got to build a fucking nation. How are we building a goddamn nation? When, when, and you keep telling us we got to protect the queen. It's a black man's job telling me, Y'all done told me I'm not no real man because I'm gay and I can't sit up there and satisfy my queen. But hell, I don't even know who the fuck your queen is because shit, you've got a queen, a harlot, a goddamn jokester. you got a mystery. How, how do I do that? How come we don't have that conversation and be real about it? And But I do. How come we're sitting up here trying to fight a system that tells, that tells men in the court systems about child support and carrying on? You know, you understand? We yeah. got a whole system that is that is stacked that has stacked the odds against me on period. But see, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. A real friend is gonna tell you that you're a piece of shit when it comes to how he see you raising your kids in a negative mind. Mm. Or how or when he can when he see you making babies and you ain't doing a damn thing for him, but making another baby. Or how about this one? How about because you didn't like that woman, you just said they had five kids with that one. Mm -hmm. you shit with them kids, but you know when I'm here got married and I started a new life, and now you got new kids, and all these kids don't even know that they got brothers and sisters over here because you said fuck that bitch. Okay, and stop. Kids. right there. Let's get deep. Come on, do it. You got this one over here, five kids. You don't want to fuck with her no more because she said something about being responsible. So you uh, mad. Now you mad. Okay, what well, you, well, you say? Let's get deep. Now you mad. Now, so let's go over here and fuck with the chick that think because you got a nice car and you motherfucking out here dressed nice and everything, she going to bust it open for you. And she feel like, oh, this nigga got a little money. He got a little coin in his pocket. Let me goddamn motherfucking catch him when I'm ovulating. He got another one coming over here. All right, now I got him. He here chilling. Yeah, that's my man. I don't want him to leave the house. That's my man. Everything he doing for me and my child. Mm. First and foremost, you need to motherfucking recognize the fact that he got four kids across the motherfucking town that he ain't doing a motherfucking thing for. What right. kind of woman are you to motherfucking condone that nigga's bullshit that he's not even dealing with his children over there? That's Secondly, mm. now I was now here's ten years go by, right? 
Keep now we going, now we're going to the five year run round. Let me show you where it gets deep. Now we're in the five year round. Next thing you know, these kids are getting older. They're right. in the free team. They're 15, 16, 17 years old. Right. It's 10 of them. Three yeah. baby mamas. They don't know each other. They live in motherfucking communities where they five miles apart. They hit the motherfucking goddamn team parties. Now brothers and sisters are fucking each other. And now we got these diseases and motherfucking mental issues from new kids that we don't understand. Come on now. Now, you want to know where the fucking problem really lies? Again, that goes back to motherfucking poison. We are our own poison. And until we open up our motherfucking minds and close our goddamn mouths, because guess what? A nigga walking, saying a whole lot more than a nigga talking. Ooh. And I'm telling you, how many motherfucking people you know have been to the altar how many people the motherfucking them pop one or two babies to find out later on that they was motherfucking siblings? Mm, mm, mm -hmm. They got a deadbeat nigga motherfucking bouncing from bitch to bitch every time responsibility hits his lap. All right, come on now. Come on now. So that's what I mean when you want to take it deeper because we always wonder what these interlying urban and, and, and doggone uh, situations that we have from the mental, you know what I'm saying? We have the mental note, the unstable-minded children and everything. Hell, right. that motherfucking child mind is fucked up because I'm going to tell you it's, it's fucked up because he fucked his sister. You know what I'm saying? If his daddy don't fuck his cousin, his cousin don't fuck his mama, okay, and, got your dad, and you fuck your sister, and your sister fuck your brother, and then you have another motherfucking baby, God damn it, some DNA don't mix. You understand what I'm saying? How about that? What if everybody had one strand of some type of system of Down syndrome? By the time you mix these motherfucking kids together, you got some new Down syndrome that you don't know what the fuck to do about. Okay. The brothers have to want to keep keep in order for his brother to keep him. Mm. And, yo, and, and don't tell me about, you know, my thing is this. You're moving to a neighbor. Okay. <laughs> I don't, you know what, brothers? Pay attention. Yeah. Heard this from Big Red. Okay, I said this. I'll follow you. Take it. Okay, who gonna check me? It's yeah. like you're moving to a motherfucking community. You want to mess and, and, and screw around and play around with all the bad little beautiful chicks, whether they smart, dumb, stupid, slow, goddamn it, can cook, or if they a hoe. Okay, that's what you want right. to do. Okay, okay. All right. Now you done made a motherfucking baby over here, a baby over there. Every time a motherfucker pop out the baby because you're in the same community with the same fellas and the same females and everything, the first thing out your mouth is an irresponsible ass black man in this community is that's not my baby. Mm. Okay. Here's the problem with that. You can't seem to break the chain of the label of ignorance and dogitude. That's my word today. Dogitude. Is that the word? Dogitude. That's my word today. That, that that's bestowed upon the foreheads of good men. Because what you do is you create a whole negative motherfucking spew. This spirit is all over the doggone urban communities. So here it is, the guy that is genuine, that don't even want to sleep with your ass till y'all married, gets treated like shit. Well. You feel me? Come on now. Y'all is the niggas that I despise and the reason my circle is so motherfucking small. Mm. Because I noticed something about my growth. Every time a nigga asks me a question or come to me for some advice about a, a relationship situation, I will hear you out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will tell you what I think. But what you're going to have to dog going to be man enough when you come talk to me is to be able to handle the last question I'm gonna ask you. What did you do? Oh, yeah. Oh, say what? If you can't answer that question without being mad at me, then this is an imbalanced, one-sided conversation. Because when you came to me, you asked for a man's advice. But I'm sorry, little boy. Mm. You don't want to hear from a man, you're not a man your damn self, so you need to go ask a little boy, a yes man, somebody that's gonna make you feel good about your dog or two. Come on now, because I'm not him. 
Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm going to keep it 100 with y'all. We are our own problem in the black communities. The black men, I want to hear about all that demasculation. I'm so tired of hearing all that bullshit. You know yeah. what? Get your stupid ass up and do something. And how dare you call the black woman your queen when you will doggone disrespect, exploit their body, but fight another nigga for doing it to your sister or mama. Ooh, that part. Don't do nothing to a female that you wouldn't want nobody to do to your mama, your sister, your auntie. Hmm. Or your daughter. Or your daughter. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when you out here slanging dick and you think that's a trophy on your motherfucking shoulder, it took a daddy somewhere on this planet to make that piece of pussy you fucking. It's going to be right here. Yeah. So while you out here making these babies, you're going to make motherfucking little boys that's going to get fucked over by savvy women, or you're going to make little girls that's going to meet a nigga just like you. How about that? How about that? Now let me go here. Because I'm I I gotta I gotta put an addendum on here. Because to all of the alphabet children who sit down and entertain all of this, and, and, and I'm gonna talk to the alphabet children. I'm not gonna talk to my ladies just yet, because I, I I'm talking to all of y'all who find it fit to be the side piece to where y'all think that that your 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 Badge of honor is the label of side piece. <laughs> okay. Now, truth be told, it because of the world we live in, they may be necessary. Mm -hmm. at, the same time, at the same time, if we want to do better, we got to be better. Right. Okay. If we want to do better, We've got to be better. You want a man that's going to sit up there and treat you right and this and the other? And you can't sit up there and expect for him to give you all of his attention to this and the other, knowing that you're taking that from somebody when he's at home. Okay? Now, let me add a proviso here. Because the proviso that I'm going to add is this. If he continues to seek after you and don't give a damn about what he got at home, then why is it that you feel that you got the bomb diggity that's going to make him change to give you everything, honey? You ain't nothing but a lay. Call it what it is. Call it what it is and let it be. Don't sit down here and get into your motherfucking feelings thinking that you got a, a, a prize piece when he treat you as a dime piece. Because you you are a dime a, a, a baker's dozen. Okay? To all my alphabet children out there, because we seem to thrive off of that kind of shit because we got a man and it's just a piece of trade. Okay? Trade is community property. Okay? The song says, you down with OPP, other people's pussies, property, and penises. Yep, there you go. Okay? Trade is just that. It is community property okay and as long as we are there to fill in the gaps that men would never have the fortitude or the willingness to want to do better because they're, they're they're existing in a plane to where we are fulfilling their delusion we're letting them stay within that realm of altered reality but see nobody you know what means nobody ever paints the picture of exactly who they are right because if you want to paint the picture let's keep it simple because my cons my construct is not hard it's not rocket science no. if you if you just say the main is the house mm. okay you got the lease and the mortgage then you got the side piece okay now the main signed the lease right she's in the big house the side piece only signed a sublet. You get a room. Oops. This house comes with three bedrooms, two baths, kitchen, living room, dining room. That sublet is one room. And we all know the entire world, if you want to find some one room, if you look it up, it's a whole tale. Hmm. <laughs> so, so, 
<laughs> so you break it down. <laughs> so and for the African children, it's a motel. Motel. <laughs> right. Anybody need to write that shit down? Because you better pay attention. Now, now to your to your credit, oh one, because you think. <laughs> yeah. Cupcake said, put that on the rear right here. Oh, okay. Take that to grandmama's house. Okay. <laughs> now, to all of you who think you got your shit together, okay, you still got a mortgage and a house over here. Mm -hmm. That's the main. Now, every now and again, honey, you got a vacation. It ain't a beach house because you ain't got that kind of coin. You just go there for vacation, but you got to leave there. And one thing about a vacation is this. You only get one one, one time a year, honey. One. Okay? Now, you may have vacation time where you got four weeks, but you're only going one place. Okay? Eventually, that there is going to end. And when your vacation time runs out, you don't get no new vacation time, honey, until your anniversary come around for the year again. You know what? I don't think they know how serious this dog or two it is. Okay? Come on, give it. I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you two examples of things that I know actually happened in Atlanta. Quickly. One example. The niggas that make it hard for the good guy. I seen one break up with a woman of five years. Mm. Lie to her and say that I need to move back to Chicago to take care of my mother. Wow. And I don't want to, I don't, I don't have time to, to, to pursue this relationship because I don't have the, 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 the means to take you with me. So I think we need to end this here. Mm -hmm. this, and so he played the whole breakup sex and everything. And oh, I'm a mission to cry baby shit with her for her to wake up two, three days later and drive him to the airport. Right. Mm. He goes to Hartsfield. She crying. He kissing her. He playing the crybaby thing the whole nine yards. The whole time it's been going on, he's been talking to his new bitch. They got more than her. Bigger house, car, money, all that. She drops him off at the airport. He walks in. He looks at the window. Like he just going, oh, you know, that whole look through the window like you're crying, like the commercial for Hallmark. Okay, he's doing all that. Okay. Soon as she pulls off, he walks out the other side of the hotel and get in the car with his other bitch because he told her he was just flying into Atlanta. Started his new life with her. She lived on the opposite side of where he stayed with the other one, so he just never went back to that way. <laughs> Why did I know that part was coming? <laughs> now that's one. Now here's one I know all too well because this one is me. That's okay. why I'm able to say what I say because I did what I did early. I got my karma. I took my ass whoopings. But I tell you like this: nothing teaches a lesson like an experience. And I'm trying to tell you, I have been out of town with the side chick <laughs> saying that I was on the road with an artist when I was really down, kicking it in Florida with the side chick and answering my phone anytime I felt like it and, and, and always making the call short because I had to get backstage or I had to get back to the station or I had to get to a photo shoot or I'm waiting to see if the limousines picking up and all that the whole time yards. I'm, the whole time I'm staying at a beautiful ass resort. Walking around, goddamn it, ball jumps. What she saw in being that person allowed me to answer the phone to talk to my fucking man, my wife. At that point, what, what the mentality, please feel free to type this. What, what the fuck was they thinking? If I can do that in front of you, you are never going to get a motherfucking promotion. Your contract says side bitch for life. That's it. That is it. Now, you know what? Here, let's go here. Let's go here because one of my sons has passed on now. 
And one of the things that we had got into a real big to do about was this idea here. Because he was seeing, no, he wasn't seeing it. They were fucking. He was fucking this one guy. Okay. But was friends with both of them because it was a couple. Okay. And when I say friends, I mean they went to the bars together. You going over here taking care and, and, and bringing soup and care on. You done know, spent the night. You know, they hanging. It got to the point where it was it was a, 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 a situation because the two of them thought that the other one knew. And so they were living the fantasy of, oh, this could be a triad relationship. Now, see, here in, 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 in the alphabet children world, honey, that whole triad thing where there's three folks in the relationship is, is, is you know, it's, it's becoming popular. You know, and and it used to be just a white a white thing, but now the 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 the, the, the black alphabet honey are trying to come on to this. Okay, shout out. And, to uh, so the whole idea of what they thought was going to happen was that that the, the other person was going to be in on it, and this was going to be a win 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 situation. Okay. However, it did not play out like that. Okay. So now I'm sitting up here. I'm like, baby, listen, I told you, go have your fun, but don't sit down there and get your feelings into it because you were pursued. Okay. He pursued and pursued and you told him what you said to tell him, you know, now you are because you already involved, blah, 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 blah. He said, don't worry about that because I got that. All right. Mm. Okay. All right. So now he done pushed all the right buttons and got you all hot and bothered and care. No, all right, y'all did your thing. You should have left it there. But what you did, no. You decided to where it was more than once and then more than once became feelings and then this became this and this became that and blah, 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 blah. Well, then what happened was you're trying to come to me and, and, and we're on social media and we're talking in code because nobody knows what's going on because we're arguing in a group. Right. And he kind of covered me, well, well, you see married men and this, that, and the other. I said, honey, there's a whole big difference between me and you. Because, number one, I did not go after this one. Number two, after I said my piece and they said, okay, I'm good because I got this, I took that off my desk. I made peace with God and said, no, I'm not breaking up nobody's home because he keep coming over here. I've never once gone over there to that woman's house. I don't know who the hell she is. I'm not sitting down there breaking bread with her. I'm not sitting down there looking at her in her face knowing I'm fucking her man. I said, that ain't that, but that's what you doing. Hello, Barbara. Right. This yeah. is Cheryl. <laughs> you, in this, you in this bitch's face y'all sitting up here y'all judies y'all are judy y'all y'all went on vacations together bitch and this child don't know that you fucking her man really that's just not cool really and so it had become a whole bit to do to what in the end of it all child they done broke up. Everybody done broke up. And then you and the dude, y'all had a falling out. Okay? They broke up. The dude that went to somebody else got a new boyfriend that wasn't you. And now you pissed because you sitting up there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The thing was, the dude sitting up there had another side piece. And so now you trying to tell him who he can and cannot fuck outside of you and the lover. Okay, what the song say? I'll be the other woman long as I know I'm the only other woman you'll ever know. <laughs> <laughs> so it started to get messy. So now we sitting up here at damn uh, IHOP because we have we was all at the club. We sitting up here at IHOP, and so now you said, "Oh, child, this boy sitting up here. He is still. He done got fighting mad because the other side bitch is is sitting across from him." Okay, getting all the plate, getting all the money, getting all the food and carrying on. And so now you sitting up here singing uh, La, La, um, Latoya Luckett, honey. You know, swing, batter, batter, batter. Remember when she came out with that? 
Okay. <laughs> you was in up here. Okay. Cause she ain't got shit on me. Swing bada bada bada. You okay. sit up here at the table stewing. Because the other side, bitch, is now is sitting up here getting some of the goodies. Yeah. The side side. Mm. The second side, you was potatoes. That was the corn. <laughs> yeah. You got the side salad and you got the vegetable on your plate. Well, <laughs> at that, how about <laughs> okay? Uh-huh. <laughs> she say, "Put that on Jack. Be nimble, <laughs> ah, Jack, Jack. Be quick, honey. Uh-huh. Don't fall on the candlestick, honey. Okay. Wait a minute. Just trying to. I think the African kids are getting trapped by the irony of the hunt." They are preying on trade that are really broken spirits. Remember, they're not catching the best trades. They're catching the ones with most clockable weaknesses. The broken spirit is a chaotic vampiric spirit. A vampire spirit will have you where you can't function with them and can't function with anyone else. And listen. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. He got a point. Mm-hmm. Haji, he, he tried to be slick with it, but he got a point in between his, his statement. <laughs> See, I got, uh, I'm going to tell you, I'm, let me be honest with you. I got this thing about Haji, right? <laughs> okay. I, I analyze everything that Haji posts in, in, on the show. Mm-hmm. And I'm what they call a Libratic algebra, algebra. Yeah, yeah. I'm the algebra. I've always said I was gonna have to say this one day, but I am the libratic, algebraic, equational bias representative of his statements. I thought I would never have to say that. Okay, oh, <laughs> but his shit is unbalanced but balanced. Uh huh. So a lot of times I'm over here and I'm not cheerleading with two pom-poms, I'm cheerleading with one when he speaks. Right, okay. If he just can clean up that other side. <laughs> Here's the thing. And this just goes across the board. This, this is just men, period. Okay, this is why I'm saying we as men need to know, you know, we keep saying we, we are accountable and caring on what the hell was the Million Man Mars if we don't do not stand behind the so-called atonement that was supposed to have been made. Right. Okay. Here's what this is. Yes, a lot of people are preyed upon and, and this, that, and the other, and when they're on the search for Red October is what I call it. Mm-hmm. When you're on the Red October, oftentimes those streets are just that. You hunting in the streets. You're not looking for love. What you're looking for is somebody that's going to help ease the pain of whatever it is you're going through at the moment. Whether it's the, the, the loneliness, depression, uh, you, okay, whatever, whatever. You don't got kicked out. You're mad at your at your spouse or the, the, your significant other, whoever. Whatever that is, it is being an American. You have come become accustomed to treating the problem versus curing it. How about that? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. And in that, when when we're on that hunt, we get exactly what we're looking for. But what happens is that we 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 end up putting our feelings. And it's, it, when you had a good sexual conquest, honey, because a lot of times that's what ends up happening. And if you don't have sex, what happens? You end up getting someone who treats you in a way that validates you or validates what you're thinking, and you have never had that before. So now, you done got all twisted to think that, oh, this is what this is, and now I got to seek out there because he gets me. And instead of it being a moment, see, we don't know how to take moments and let a moment be a moment. So now when you have that, then you got somebody who is out here on the uh, and, and they're hunting for prey. They could smell you coming a mile away, damn it. So you, you part of the hustle. Yep. You part of the hustle. Okay, and so now, now when y'all trying to hustle each other, 
Then it becomes a whole big ass battle because this child saw you as a means to an end. You saw this one, honey, as 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 a means to get over. Okay, and then y'all met in the middle of what? You got a cockfight, literally. <laughs> My phone. Okay. Literally. Let me tell you some funny shit. I had a side chick. Ran the whole relational thing like the secondary race, right? Mm-hmm. Realized what I was doing. Started to self-check myself. Mm-hmm. And remove myself from that, and go where I was supposed to be, and recreate who I'm supposed to be, and do right. Uh huh. Sometimes, just like being an addict, you have to doggone admit it in order to go be cured. Right. Well, so, that's the first step. Yeah. So I checked myself. Did nothing happen? Believe me. If I was single, it was wonderful being there because everything that you see in the movies, I was getting. Right. Whew. Yes, Lord. Yes. God rest our soul. But, but the thing was, I saw myself losing my losing myself control. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And being the side, I found myself wanting that more than what I had. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that wasn't that wasn't the way to live. So no. I I tried to fix it by get pulling myself away, mm-hmm. saying you know what this ain't right. We knew exactly what this was day one. I didn't lie to you. You know what I'm saying? We as adults made a decision, and we have come so far that we're only comfortable being intimate with each other and nobody else. Mm-hmm. And it's it's totally affecting my home. And like, how would you feel if that was the demise of my home? Now I'm with you, then you'll be wondering every day who's going to do it to you. Do it to you. Mm-hmm. So I'll pull myself away from that. But lo and behold, karma won't let you get away fast. When I thought I was free and I done did my dirt, all it took was 72 hours of being free. I didn't have to call no more. I, you know what I'm saying? None of that. I was like, it felt refreshing. I didn't have to look over my shoulder. And then on the way to work at 7.30 one morning, I get a phone call. I didn't have to be to work till 9. I was leaving early because I sometimes I like to go eat breakfast alone, reflect, drink a cup of coffee, clock in. I get a call. Are you close by? You all must at work. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty close. Can you stop by? I'm like, now this thing that I'm going in my mind is if I stop by here, we go, and I go in here. I'm all I can think in my mind is I'm gonna walk in here and be like, "What's up?" And you're gonna be like, "Come here," and you're gonna tug at the motherfucking thing, and next thing you know, you gonna drop down and goddamn and, and start playing the saxophone because you goddamn it, you you that real chick, you know? So you you know how to you know this. So I'm like, okay. I'm like a steady arguing, like I'm like almost, I'm trying to get my ang- anger wall up. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you want? Like, why are you calling? Me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was like, "No, come by. I got something for you. I guess I'll tell you something. It's very important." Very important. Oh fuck! I got an hour and a half before I got to work. Okay, nobody's watching. Nobody's seeing me. It's early in the morning. My house is in the bed still. I bust got them couple of corners. Pull up, go in there. I get the big smiles and the good morning and hey, all the happy, you know, when I walk in the door and I'm like, yeah, hey, you know, what's going on? I got my dog on my vampire crosser. <laughs> and I get the quote, I get the big thing, guess what? And I'm like, if it was verbal, you could have told me on the phone. No, I want you to see. Guess what? We pregnant. Who the fuck is we? Ooh. I was looking like, um, what? <laughs> mm-hmm. Because I got a whole contract over here with with long dresses and motherfucking tuxedos that I did. Mm-hmm. 
And sure enough, okay, so me being a smart guy, I knew I better smile and goddamn get the hell on the work. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Are you serious right now? For real? I was like, you happy? You happy? I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, hey, you know what? When I get off work, I got to get myself situated. I'll come back out. Come we'll talk about it later. You know what I'm saying? We'll meet up. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what's going to see what's what. Okay. And it was the hug, hug, hug. And I get in my car and I've been in the corner. And you probably can hear me from here to Mount St. Helens. Mm. What the fuck, 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 fuck. I'm at work all day. You could drive a forklift in front of me. I wouldn't say it. Mm. I was fucked up the whole eight hours here. Mm-hmm. Of course. Because now I'm going, how do you hide that? How do you not piss that off to a point that is at your door? Mm. And how do you deal with that and give it enough time for it not to become hostile Mm -hmm. without disrupting your door? Mm -hmm. And I tried it during that part of it. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Right. Every time I'm out in the streets, I'm whipping by there, making sure they got what they want. They go to the doctor. I'm going to work, working half days, going to the doctor with them, leaving from over there at my regular time and get off, going home. That type of shit. All right. And then that bullshit kicked in. The last of that second trimester. Mm-hmm. But possession becomes a part of the situation. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, I'm sitting at a table at Fazoli's mm-hmm. because I was invited after work by the one in my house to go have some Fazoli's. But she had clocked my bullshit already because I was just too exhausted all the time, not being, not interested in nothing on that yard. Figured it out, followed me, confronted, set up the appointment. I got off work. Said she's taking me to show me something. I'm riding as a passenger. Pull up at Fazoli's. I'm like, okay, I knew it was Fazoli's here. I eat here sometime for lunch. And he's like, no, that's not what it is. So I'm standing outside. I'm like, why did you bring me Fazoli? I'm tired. I got, you know what I'm saying? And right when I said that, that white van pulled up next to him. The white van with the belly. Mm-hmm. Of course. Oh, of course. I was like, now here it is. And black men, this is a lesson. Mm-hmm. I had the audacity and I had no right to have a fucking attitude because I felt like I was set up. Oh, child, of course. Of course, child, that's ruthless. Okay. <laughs> that's not ruthless, honey. Okay, you mad. Okay, I'm going to fuck you up. Okay. Uh-huh. So when she got out, she looked at me and smiled. She thought it was funny. <laughs> and when she looked at when the other one, the main one wasn't looking, I looked back at her and I was like, I'm going to beat your ass. That's how I said Mm-hmm. And we go inside. Mine thinks she got something going on because she she finna shut shit down. Mm-hmm. And she goes, "Oh, anybody want something to drink or something to eat and everything? Oh, would you like something?" And she's like, "Oh, well, I'll take a soda." And they gonna look at me. And she gonna look at me and say, "You want something?" I was like, "I don't want shit. <laughs> I don't want shit." Then mm-hmm. they, go, they both sit in a booth. I walk over to the. I'm walking behind. They sit down at the booth on the opposite side of the table. They were like, come on, sit down. I was like, nah. I grabbed a chair and I slid up to the middle. Even mm-hmm. I said, oh, I had a motherfucking issue as soon as I sat down. Why you said this in that book? Oh, that's when you talk. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
All right, so the conversation got a little heated. Thank God for Gwinnett's finest. We're sitting there on break, having a, having dinner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because that side piece, which is the main piece, and in so many words, let her know that when she has her desires, she don't allow nobody else to touch her, but the person who doggone put the baby there. And she gonna continue to have them do so. You just told this man's wife, yeah, I'm pregnant by your husband, and I'm gonna keep sleeping with her because I don't sleep with other men. You know, right? mm -hmm. I slid back because I thought goddamn Mr. Shot Town was gonna come across the table. Mm-hmm. But she calmed down and she just told him, bitch, you're done. Whatever the motherfucker made me, blah, 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 it will get. Don't call him no more. Call me. I go home. What do men do? Not the audacity to be the one that's motherfucking mad as hell. Mm -hmm. On the fight, all the dumb ass shit. Just to find out a week later, the main one was goddamn swelling up to. <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> so, of course, we had to buy two baby beds, two car seats. Oh, yeah, God got you good, honey. Yeah, I got a whooping right there. I got a great whooping. Yeah, God got you real good. But see, here, here's where it is because, see, a story like that, we as men will hear it, you know? Mm hmm. And I'm sure when you told that story, they're like, damn, dog, damn, that's fucked up. Shit. Damn, you you know, you, you damn, you, you didn't think to play that a little differently? That shit. Right. Why you want me to be more deceptive? Yeah. Right. That. You know, I felt a real man would reprimand me. Yes. And but I know you, know you need your ass whooped for that bullshit. Okay. Because because I'm gonna tell you where because because I do I do this, what the fuck are you mad about? This is what the fuck you said you wanted. Mm. The fuck you wanted just what the fuck I said. Yep. Now you should have known goddamn well that eventually somebody gonna end up saying something. So this is what the fuck you want. This is what you mad about. Right. You can't be mad at her, and you can't be mad at the one at home because shit, the one at home was at home where your ass was supposed to be, but you playing house over here. So what you mad about? See, that should have been the conversation. You ain't mad about the um. You ain't mad about the actual the situation that arrived. You mad that you got caught? And you got caught, and that's and 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 that there is what is what it is. Mm -hmm. And see, we as men, because we do this, we do this here. It's the same on the alphabet on the alphabet corners. Okay, the alphabet should. It's the same exact shit. Is the the what may be a little different is that I think we're a little bit quicker to fight because because it's you know right same gender so folks are set up there get swollen up round up this that and the other you know want to come across the table but then I always I do this with bitches I said girls what the hell y'all fighting each other for the only way that it's supposed to be a fight between the two of y'all is if y'all mouthing off at one another okay. Or if this bitch is someone that was close to you. That's different. You know what I'm saying? Because I tell this all the time. You and your significant other, you are in relationship with the best friends on both sides. Why? Because this is my compadre. This is We rode dogs. So indirectly, I'm in relationship with them because hell, every time we go somewhere or or whatever, 
you got, hey, I'm on the phone with so-and-so. Hey, what's up? You know, became family. So indirectly, I'm in, you in relationship with me too. So for me, that's just like my, my best friend, Yugi. For me and Yugi, for me to go behind her back, this what kind of what, what kind of friend would that be? When you know gave me all the secrets, bitch, I'm sitting there crying with you when when, when you know had when you know, y'all had a falling out or whatever. I'm sitting there with shit done went wrong. You done had to borrow money from me because the lights weren't together. We done kept your house together, this, that, and the other. You know, I'm there for your happy times, but I was there at your damn wedding. I'm there. And yet because y'all decided to go away, or or because somebody decided to get frisky. Oh. I'm going to sit down there and hurt you like that. And you know, no one, my friend, because see, my, Yubi don't play like I play. Okay, she's very relationship oriented and caring. All. She ain't the whole, like, you know, she didn't have the whole way at that time. Well, she did, but <laughs> she gets one person, you know. Right. I, I save all that for the person that I with. Well, now she's saying, this heifer, okay, she done became me <laughs> in another life. So, now you know, so you indirectly in that. So anytime that that the two people go at it, bitch, that ain't that you fighting the wrong motherfucker because the common denominator is him or her. Mm -hmm. This is what they knew that they were in relationship. They knew that if the other bitch sitting up there saying, "I don't know who you are," but you mouthing off at her, so of course they're gonna defend themselves. Bitch, wait a minute, who the fuck is you? This is my man, bitch. That can't be yours because he mad. What the fuck you mean? Mm. Both y'all got a what the fuck you mean moment. So instead of y'all getting mad at each other, that should have went to this. What the fuck you mean? You got some nigga. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, unless it became somebody who's who's enthralled. And, okay, bitch, you, you was here from the jump. So what the fuck is this? How did this, you know, it becomes all of that. How'd you done put something up in here? What do you say? I wish someone would pull these side chicks' coattails. If you get pregnant by a married or committed man, what does what does he own? Uh, what does own you? You're drying up your escape money. <laughs> a married man barely wants to give you any uh, his any money. So how is the side chick supposed to ride in the sunset with with this dumb goal? <laughs> <laughs> How's it crazy? You know? Listen, mm -hmm. the whole idea of all of this and see is real easy because I, I want to stick with just dealing with the men folk on all this because it's easy to jump to say, okay, what kind of woman are you to sit down there to accept this? That's a whole nother situation because the woman always get blamed or I should say the other person always the one who gets all of the blame because of the mindset we're going to say that for another show. We're going to say that for another show. We're going to call that show the hole in the nutshell. All right. Yeah. Okay, because the, the problem is is when we're dealing with the dude, dudes, you know, and we got all these goddamn unspoken man codes. I see how you know he gets on my fucking nerves when you do that old bullshit. That's against the man code. Hey, my, nigga. The fuck <laughs> is the goddamn man code? Fuck that shit. You know, and that's the problem that we have, and especially among us as motherfucking black men. We so busy trying to have a goddamn unspoken goddamn codes and rules and bullshit, you know, to where we don't even know how to fucking function. And then we sit so where's down. The, where's the motherfucking code when you got damn motherfucking my homie? We play on the basketball team on the weekend, but when I'm out of town on a business trip, you fucking my old lady. Where's the code? Oh. 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 Where's the code where you in her motherfucking DMs? Motherfucker saying shit you ain't got no motherfucking business. Ooh. And having dinner got them the following Sunday with us. Ooh. See, that, all of that. All of that. I got your code, nigga. It's a hollow okay. point. And, 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 uh, okay. And so. Okay. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so, and, and this here, it upsets me because for so long, okay, yeah, exactly. Okay, mm -hmm. exactly. Which that, That's a whole class on itself, okay? 
because it upsets me because oftentimes I t when we said a few shows ago that being male, born male, honey, is one of is just the hardest thing here. Okay, because everything about us is dealt on perception of what these unspoken rules are supposed to mean and say. We have sit out here and created a whole fucking lifestyle based upon what the fuck masculinity is supposed to mean. And there's a lot of unspoken fucking rules. It's unspoken. And then we're supposed to get this ostentatiously or through fucking osmosis. And then we and then we're supposed to be exact replicas and interpretation of this shit. Okay, but here's the imbalanced confusion of doggone parenthood. Don't you be out there mistreating them girls, baby. Let your mama talk to you. Do what you're, do you know what I'm saying? You be careful out there how you treat them girls. You don't want nobody treating your mama bad, your sister bad. Now. You dog going to be good. And save yourself for marriage. You know, if you got you got more stuff to do with your life and your daddy out there, boy, you get some leg. You better go. Yeah, yeah you better get up. Don't be just messing with that one girl. Yeah. Yeah. Now you're confused. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me, let me back you up a little bit. Let me back you up just a little bit. Because we get mamas that do that to the little five, six, seven year old that got the little cute babies. Oh, ain't he cute? My baby gonna have all the little girlfriends. Look at he got all the little girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And then she let her older friends sit down there, hug up on that baby, kiss all up on him and carrying on because he's so cute. Got him, put him in a little designer shit to carry on, and then let this little boy sit down here and think he the man. Oh, you gonna be the man of the house. And he, up, and he grew up to have two radio stations and two 16-year-old boys. I know him. And then we do, and we don't correct it. We don't try to do anything about it. But what we do is we do unspoken shit. Because now he does something that goes against man's code, i.e., don't be masculine, don't like to play sports, out there with the little girls when I'm doing the hand games instead of trying to fuck them. So now I'm an anomaly. I'm a problem. Okay. You, the one, you the one the country man take you the son and the country man take his goddamn take you down to the motherfucking to the whole house. Right. Okay. And then on top of it, see here's another one of the unspoken man rules. Because you'll sit down there and it takes two parents. Now you want your you want the you want the at-home wife to raise your children, but now you making him too sissified. Because you got him cleaning up after his own ass. You got him washing a dish. You got him learning how to cook his own motherfucking meal. Now you're making him too sissified. So in order to man him the fuck up, now you want to make sure he understands what pussy is. So you want to take him to the motherfucking hole down the street or make sure he got the girls. Oh, wait a minute. I'm having flashbacks. And if you give her enough money, goddammit, she going to definitely, he going to know what pussy is when he leaves. Shit. My mother had to tell it to my daddy. He got mad because I'm in there cooking. The fuck is he in here cooking for? She said, "What? What the fuck? He, we can't wait till the boy sit there and find somebody. He got to find somebody first. He got to know how to take care of himself. What the fuck are you talking about? Daddy got mad at Mama because I was in the kitchen cooking. That's that old school. That's that old old school. That's not regular old school. That's that old old where you ain't supposed to pick up a pot of gun. You know what I'm saying? And right. To me, that shit went away." It, you know how they say some shit just go away and change with generation? That shit was abolished. Right. <laughs> you know how many females, you think about how many females right now. You can go outside and stop the next 10 females walking down the damn street. And I'm going to tell you, nine of them, all they know how to do is make reservations. They can't make motherfucking goddamn rice. <laughs> unspoken man code right. and that there we I really wish that we could abolish that shit see and it was and, and back in the day when we had you know work and 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 our fathers were actually doing shit they were teaching you how to be in the business good bad or otherwise because hell even those had that was on that illegal hustle if it was something they wanted to, because they they got a son you know 
They want their boy to be just like them. So now you try to teach them the business and this, that, and other. Don't let no hoe do that. We, and, and then it wasn't never, don't let no woman, don't let no girl. Don't, it's always bitches and hoes. Don't let no bitch do this. Don't let no hoe. So we're taught and trained to, to, to sit up and disrespect women from the job. Except your mama. Mm-hmm. I've been there. You call my wife no hoe. But you call, you call my sister one. You call my auntie one. Bitches and hoes. Oh, yeah, everybody's a bitch and a hoe with these three. Right. Y'all forget when he gets a girl, it's normally trying to play gatekeeper by saying that it ain't his baby instead of go get the chest and start focusing on providing for the child. You know what? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You know. So listen, this here, I, I want to flush this out a little bit more because absolutely, you know, I really want to write a book about that. The un, you know, just the unspoken rules, the, the man code. Meach, it is time to uh, start coding this stuff down and really, motherfucking, let's write it down and both goddamn seek out. Let's let's do the yin and the yang, you know what I'm saying, the heads and tails of these subjects because the only way that we're going to get to the doggone raw of it is that we bring somebody, you know, bring people on here, but we need to bring somebody from both sides of the fence. Exactly. You know? I, I, I agree. I agree. I because can, get in touch with Pimp and Ken, because he do shows like this. Okay. You bring Pimp and Ken on here, and then you go to the other side of it. Yeah. And that way, that way, that's what, you, that way it, you're, you're here, because like I said, the best, the best lesson is experience. That's right. That's right. And, and 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 it has to be because child, it, what what upsets me is that we have allowed generations to 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 fester in this because now we have allowed our our young children, our boys, our men, to absolutely believe that going to jail is a rite of passage. You can't get no street credit unless you did some time. Right. We have allowed that to become normal. That's some weirdo shit to me. We and, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Because if you remember, we grew up where the old heads on the street ran your ass home because you didn't have time to get in trouble. Going to jail. Listen, they, if you knew your kids, you knew who was going to do what. Yep. If you paid attention to your kids, you knew who had who had a who had a talent for them damn streets. You knew who didn't, and and carrying on. Old heads knew that shit too. Yep. That's how those who kept hanging on and carrying on, they were trying to dissuade it, but they saw that they had a talent for it. So those who were the OGs were trying to teach them the right way to run the hustle. Yep. Not be a sloppy ass little punks on these goddamn corners. What's happening, JoJo? Okay. That there was the thing. And, 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 and then they gradually brought them into the fold. Right. You know, they saw that they had a talent for it. You know? So we're going to teach you the right way so you can sit down here. You don't get caught up. You don't get this. You don't end up dead, blah, 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 blah. It was it was, it was, was something with that. But the old heads knew what this is. Listen, I don't, I don't condone organized crime, but at the same time, I don't condemn it either because the operative word there is organized. Yeah, not that bullshit going on now. It was organized, organized crime. Didn't nobody know what the fuck it is you were doing because you wasn't in their goddamn business unless you was in the business. They kept the communities up and running, which is why all of the Mama Leones and carrying on in, in the in the in the um in the Italian communities and Mama Rose over here in the, because everybody you know we all had a Mama Rose somewhere. We all had a Mama. That's how come they were the mamas because. They took care of the community. We didn't have poor folk and care. No, it wasn't no such thing as everybody sitting up here looking for what was going on. And in, and then they kept the dope dealers and the junkies and stuff away from the, from the kids. Yep. Everybody that was strung out on heroin and shit, they didn't take that shit home like that. They had to, we, we, it was a better way how we did that shit. Then we got real sloppy. And now we don't give a fuck about shit. Now this is why we. Look, and then we still want to say man codes and this that, and the other. Or you now it's not so much as it's not so much as we don't say codes anymore. What it is, you ain't hard or you just soft. You just soft, you know. And carrying on, and I'm like, no, don't get don't let the smooth taste food you, sweetie. 
Okay. And and Karen, I'm just not you. I'm not hard like you want me to be. But trust me, we know how to get some shit done. Facts. Okay. Oh, but having said all that, children, let me let you guys get up and 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 carry on and and all of that. What you say, Negro baseball was started by black organized crime. Well, there you have it. Okay. It had to come from somewhere. They didn't have no money to buy uniforms to carry on. So shit. I, okay. <laughs> You know, and I wish we still had the league. Actually, we we I believe that we need it. You know, but that there was that. Yeah, if it was a Negro league, uh, white boy would have a chance. <laughs> I know. But, but look at the league now. The league is white boys and and, and Latinos because the, the the Latino boys that took over a lot of that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot a lot of a lot of the players now are 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 are, are black Latino rather because you know, yeah. And that's what it is. So, child, I, I, come on. But all right, listen, children, we're going to let you guys get on up and 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 go ahead on and have the rest of your Saturday evenings, darlings. Uh, we're going to get, we're going to, we're going to make this happen. Tomorrow is Sunday, so it's going to be, I said what I said, Sundays. And uh, we're going to let you know what's going on. And we're going to invite you guys to come on in tomorrow. If you got something you want to talk about and things of that nature, darling. So, uh, having said all that, you may finish all of your crumpets because the tea has been dished. And you've been dishing tea, my darlings. Oh, with Big Meach and Aunt Nikki and the big guy ally, Big Red, over there. And if you love us, tell a friend. If you hate us, tell all of your motherfucking enemies. But do know this. Everything that we're doing over here, every way, shape, style, form, or fashion will move forward. So on that note, my darlings, honey, honey, this has been real and we're going to have more of these kinds of conversations because I really believe they're warranted. And a lot of times you may hear us repeat the same things over and over, but we need other perspectives. We need to make sure that we flush this out so that we can get it. We can't do better until we be better. We got this. Oh, well, no, I, can't, we, I said that wrong. We can't be better until we do better. That's what it is. I said it backwards. But at the same time, we need to flush these kind of conversations out, darling, so that we can we we got to get to that root. Right now, we send them peeling back the leaves. We got to get to that motherfucking root and up chuck this motherfucker. Because, darling, we have let some shit take root and it's been festering too long. And what you think is a tree ain't a tree, it's weeds. Mm. Okay. So that's what we have to do. We got to upchuck this damn thing so that we can do better. And it may be a little too late for some of us because here I'm already 50. I got another 75 good good years on here. And we could get it done in my lifetime. But at the same time, I'm looking at I just got it. I got a brand new grand nephew, honey. Okay. And so now I'm looking at the kind of man that my nephew is going to raise him to be. You know what I'm saying? What's going to happen 20 years from now when this little baby is 20, my nephew is 45, and I'm motherfucking 70, going on 71, okay? What is that going to look like for him? You know, how are we going to have a different breed of black men without sitting up here saying that the black man's image has been tarnished and all that old bullshit? All right, I'm starting on the tangent. Let me get the fuck on up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I that, that just made that, that I done felt my blood start to curdle. Okay, ooh, child. Okay, I can't even. I can't even sing, child. In sing, just okay. Sing, honey, sing, just sing. <laughs>